the South Australian National Football League presents international TV and cabaret star, the delightful Jackie Love. of the 1983 season about to start. We're only minutes away from the two teams coming onto the ground. You've had the sides. West Adelaide has gone with the team that won the second semi-final by that big margin over Norwood a couple of weeks ago. And Sturt 
They've gone with the same 20 who were successful against Nord Nick last Sunday in the preliminary final. So Robert Sturt decided not to take a chance with Neil Craig. Neil Curley showed faith in Jeff Morris and Tony Burgess. Yes, he did. Whether that faith is going to be fulfilled, we'll find out in the next two hours. But certainly, there is no doubt that a player with pulled muscles, if they've had bad ones to recover in two weeks, is certainly a great effort. Neil Craig, most unfortunate for him, but also, of course, unfortunate for Roger Winter. We think of Roger, who had a wonderful season for West Adelaide, changing in the forward pocket as a run-on ruckman. He hasn't been able to get into the team this afternoon through an injury just prior to the finals. So there's some sorrow in our hearts for him too. Rick Davies has kicked 149 goals this season. It's a South Australian record, of course. He broke Tim Evans' 146 last week. And when he kicks his first, he'll join some famous names, Pratt and Hudson, as players to have kicked 150 goals in a league season. Davies will be an important player, of course, for Sturt today. Robert, you've got your thoughts on who... Neil Curley might play on him. Well, I'd certainly play Craig Williams on him. I think that he has got the height and the strength to stay with Rick. But not only is there Rick in the side with his great marking skills at full forward, but there are two other players on the ground, Peter Motley and Bruce Linder, great acrobatic aerialists. They certainly can mark the ball very, very well. And, and as well as them, West Adelaide have looters. So in the forward line, at full forward, looters and Linda for West Adelaide and for Sturt, Davies and Motley, two great pairs, both up forward, and that's been the strengths of these two sides during the year. Umpires today, Laurie Argent and Rick Kinnear. Sturt side getting very close to coming out. Davies will be captaining the side for the first time in a grand final. The double blue's been coached by John Halbert. He certainly played some great grand finals, though, Bruce. Of course, in 1974, it was Rick Davies who on that occasion played a memorable game against Glenelg to steer the Blues to a premiership. And again in 1976, it was Rick Davies leading the field, team onto the field rather, Trevor Sims playing his 250th game. And it is he and Rick Davies who travelled together from the north of South Australia to come and play for Sturt over a great number of years. And it's fitting that such a player as Trevor Sims should lead the side onto the ground. There was a big chance three weeks ago that Trevor Sims would have to wait until next year to bring up the 250 games. But Sturt has just kept on winning. They won the first semi-final, then the preliminary final. And so Trevor Sims has his moment here today. And so does Ian Borchard, the former Richmond player. As the West LA banner breaks before Borchard gets there. And we see Lindner and Burgess, who looks fit. And Jeffrey Morris, who for so long has wanted to play in a grand final. Well, Bruce, that banner may be broke because of the power coming towards it. It's West Adelaide power. They're the red-hot favourites this afternoon to take this game. Maybe that power is exuding from them as they came out in this fairly strong, gusty breeze, and they maybe broke the banner just with the force of them coming out onto the ground. A good indication of the breeze. The balloon's blowing strongly to the southern end of Football Park. For people interstate, there's a golf course behind that southern end. And there is Geoffrey Morris, who we thought would be missing out after pulling a hamstring. He's about to stretch. But he convinced Neil Curley with a spirited performance of training this week that he would be there in this grand final side for West Adelaide. Morris, All-Australian, 184 games, 261 goals, and it's his first grand final. But it's not the first grand final for Rick Davies, of course. We talked about him in 1974 and also in 1976. Ian Day's out there with the umpires at the moment. Let's join Ian right now. Thank you very much, Bruce. Yes, the grand final umpires, Laurie Argent and Rick Kinnear. Laurie, congratulations. Two on end. Do you get any less nervous? Uh, no, it's still the same. The same feeling, excitement. Tremendous. I can remember your first game in senior football. It was a ripper. Now, here you are, grand final. Ten years, is it? Nine years? Fifth, uh, about uh, eight years ago, yes. Something in, like that. In yes. senior football. You must be very lucky. You'll be very pleased about the fact that West and Sturt, two school sides, are playing in the grand final. Makes it easier. West is certainly a tough side. There's no doubt about that. They're a physical side. And uh, we should be expecting a really good game here today. Certainly Sturt are a school side. And yes, that'll make it a little bit easier, but not very much. Laurie, you realise there's 25,000 people going to be for you and 25 against today, but that doesn't worry you, does it? No, that's not true. My wife's up there and she's neutral. <laughs> 25,001, whatever that is. Rick, congratulations. Your first grand final interstate game. You've made it. You've made it well. Congratulations. Thanks. How do you feel? Thanks, Ian. I'm elated at the moment. I couldn't be any higher than what I feel at the moment. Really happy. 
And what about the game? Uh, do you f expect a fierce game? I hope so, Ian. That's what I've prepared myself for. A fierce, fast game, plenty of goals. That's what we want today. Rick, the players get uh, words from their coaches before they come into a grand final for any game in that matter. What about the umpire's director, Murray Ducker? Has he given you and, and Laurie any particular instructions for this afternoon? No, none really, uh, Ian. All the work's been done during the year. It's up to us to prepare ourselves today for the, for the big one. And when did you first find out on Monday? Yeah, Monday night about 10 o'clock we got a phone call. Rick and Laurie, congratulations. I'm sure you'll do a great job. Well done, Thank fellas. You. All the best for this Thank afternoon. You. Back to you, Bruce. Well, I wonder if it'll be Rick Davies or Trevor Sims tossing the coin. It won't matter much, but Rick Davies has had a sensational season to perhaps end what's been a magnificent career. We're all hoping he'll go again next year. He's kicked 149 goals, as I said, this season. He's kicked 542 all up. And last year, in his first year, really as a permanent full forward, forward pocket, he kicked 98 goals. He's been in magnificent form. Ten last week in that preliminary final. And what a game Peter Motley played last week. I think he's the youngest player on the ground today. His father, an All-Australian, a famous Port Adelaide player, Jeff Motley. And Peter Motley, an All-Australian this year, in his first season, with the state, a second season with Sturt, will play at centre half forward. But Robert, who knows? We may see him at once, some stage today, back at centre half back. Yes, and for West Adelaide, of course, their skipper Ian Borchard, strong, direct. Who will ever forget the number of times he runs out of the centre of the ground and kicks that short 40 metre pass, almost head high? And Roger Lude is the full forward many, many times on the receiving end of that. And of course, at centre half forward for West Adelaide, number 10 in their side is Bruce Linder. Bruce Linder, a very um, strong fellow. He's got great agility. Some of his movement in the second semi-final, one will always remember those people who saw it when he spun out of a pack, turned around and kicked a magnificent goal. And he is a very, very unpredictable player. He can have great periods when he plays what you would call second-rate football. But then he goes from that to some of the most superb ball play you could wish to see from anybody. I thought Ian Day had a good job today. I'm convinced of it now. He's about to talk to Jackie Love on the ground. Thank you, Bruce. Jackie, how do you feel about tossing the call in front of 50,000 people? <laughs> it's a big moment. I'm very excited. <laughs> I won't ask you any in-depth questions about football. Have you ever seen a game played before? I haven't seen a grand final like this before, no. <laughs> it's very... And, well, are you going to slip out a tip? Who's going to win? Have you got a favourite colour? Uh, no, I don't want to. I've met members from both sides of the team and they're all really nice and, and I haven't been following each team, so I just have to say I hope the best team wins. Yeah, well, the breeze is pretty strong. The umpires are coming over to toss the coin. Jackie, you've right. got to do the honours. All the best. Bruce and Robert, just looking at Jackie here, if I had legs as long as her, I would have been a knock ruckman when I played football. I think she'd be a sensation. <laughs> on the centre wing, Robert. I'm sure she would. I don't think she'd get as far as... Hey, hang on a Robert. second. <laughs> I thought Ian Day had the best job in Adelaide today. He hasn't. Rick Kinnear and Laurie Argent too. Laurie just said that his wife was in the crowd. We're about to have the toss of the Rick, coin. Rick, you just told me that your wives were in the crowd. How does she feel about you kissing Jack? I could be divorced tonight, Ian. <laughs> All the very best. Thanks, Ian. So Rick Davies is about to come over with Trevor Sims. Ian Borchardt, of course, will toss the coin for West Adelaide. It is an important one. If you didn't see the reserves today, it was hard to kick goals into the breeze in the first half, not so hard after half-time. And so it'll be Davies and Borchardt. Yes, the wind, Bruce, in fact, is more across the ground now. It was very direct to the southern end, blowing fairly strongly from the north early in the reserves game. But I think it's come more from the northwest as the day has progressed. And I think now that we'll see perhaps a little bit more even. Uh, Ian Day, are you there? Would you believe the first toss, the coin lobbed on the side, and then Rick Davies called heads, and uh, it heads it was at the second time. Sturt have won the toss, and I can tell you something, Bruce and Robert, the wind out here's got to be worth four or five goals. I think it's strengthened, if anything, but what a great grand final it's going to be. Good calling up there, fellows. Thanks very much, Ian. Section of the crowd there. Very, very excited today. A large number of people in attendance. A very colourful sight. Of course, from where we are, high in the grandstand, you can see the whole of Adelaide with the lake on our left, the golf courses on the right, and a beautiful blue sky that will certainly test the players' endurance this afternoon because the sun is not cool. What a game Michael Graham played last week in that preliminary final. He's played 272 games all up. He was a member of the 1976 Sturt side, the defeat of Port Adelaide, and he's here again seven years later. A wonderful player, Graham, 444 goals all up. And, of course, Jimmy Derrington's been an important player for Sturt this year. The Rover enjoying easily his best season. Hands on hips at the moment. 
getting into the veteran class over 100 games now. Dewington's had injuries throughout his career, but is really enjoying this 83 season. Yes, players getting ready now. There'll be a national anthem, of course. The crowd full of expectancy. And it'll be a very exciting game. Players just getting into their positions. Robert Murett's coming off with Morris, so there's the first shot. Murett and Morris, the interchange players for West Adelaide. Yes, Jeff Morris, obviously, Coach Curley, not taking a chance with him. He's going to use him a little bit as a... But no, it's not Jeff Morris coming off, Bruce. I don't think he's definitely out there, number 11. Grantley Filkey. Grantley Filkey. Does they look very much alike? Because they've both got dark hair. Morris is going to start on his half-forward flank. And we're going to have the national anthem. First bounce in the 1983 Grand Final. An enormous roar. And it's De Jong and Spiel. And De Jong's going to get a free kick to start the game. Running opposed to one another. Punches it into the breeze. Pate with a finger tipper. Russell Hutton going to play on with the ball, but the umpire bringing the ball back. A mark must be taken from behind the spot where it was, was marked. Greg Goodlesey, the third centreman, between half forward and centre wing. Played very, very well. Only a young man, 20 years of age. He kicks to centre half forward. Dreer's underneath the ball with Motley. Comes off hands. Winter knocking it forward. Bennett picks up the ball, the centre wingman for West Adelaide, and kicks it to McKinnon. Round his body. Board chart underneath it. The skipper. He's got Conlon wide. That's where he's going. Try to take it with one hand with Heinrich bearing down on him. Reed over the top of it. And it's going to be a ball up at centre half forward. So Sims is at full back on Williams. Burgess is at full back on Davies. And it will be De Jong and Spill. Smith. Wilson. Derrington and Borchar. Heinrich missed it. Gross is caught. And he's holding the ball. And Sturt allowed to play on. And Pater is about to attack. He goes over half four looking for Motley. He's wide. And he'll get a free kick for an interference. Mark Dreher interfering with Peter Motley. Hitting him too high around the head. And he's got a kick in the forward pocket. He's got a wind blowing across him from his right to his left. He'll require a very good kick. But Sturt with an opportunity to put the first score on the board. Very deliberate. It's high. It's strong. Davies is under it. Complete the mark. He's still juggling, but the West Adelaide players get it away. It's a stalemate in the goal square. With Davies almost juggling it at the end. He held. It was fisted out. That would have been his 150th goal. De Jong and Davies. De Jong, strong body. Borchard. High kick. Bennett's underneath it, but a lot of Sturt players. Bennett interferes with Spill. So Big Frank can put it right back into the goal square or maybe over Davies' head. Dirk de Jong is playing back in the goal square on his own. That's the, the Ruckman who is opposing Frank Spill. Spill at half forward on his own back there was too tall for the West Adelaide opponents. Miss kick. Davies in the front spot. Brown. De Jong. Well done, De Jong. Controlled at the Summerton. Watson. McKinnon. One bounce. Punches the ball to Williams. Sims gets rid of him and Fry takes the mark. Yes, West Adelaide will get most of their players into defensive action because of the strong breeze. Leaving Eddie Fry on his own at half forward. Takes the mark, but only kicks it as far as Greg Summerton. Greg Summerton on half-back flank to Larry Watson. Watson fumbles. Bennett in front of Wilson, free kick, too high. 15 metre penalty, interference. So Randall Bennett, now from half forward, into the pocket. Luda's on the lead. He gets a free kick, in the back. It's a very good lead and a very good kick. 
and he was interfered with by Gary Ford, the Sturt fullback. And so Roger Luders with a kick. It's going to be very, very difficult to score from. Into the breeze, in the pocket, 45 degree angle. Luders kicked his 100th goal for the season in the second semi-final a fortnight ago. The only West Adelaide player ever to score a century. He's kicked it very well. You can see just how difficult it's going to be to score goals from that pocket into the breeze. He kicked that almost perfectly, a behind a Luders. So it's one point to West Adelaide. Sturt yet to score, and Sturt kicking with the breeze. Philip Heinrich, the back pocket player, into the centre square, some 70 metres down ground. Randall Bennett, who's been a fantastic player for West Adelaide this year, not tall, but his ball skills and judgment are exceptional. It's a wobbly kick to half forward. Mike Smith in front. West Adelaide playing very confidently at the moment. And well, they might. They've had a wonderful season. Their performance in the second semi-final was superb against Nord. And then Sturt beat Nord, and now Smith to the lead of Luders. Going confidently forward, not kicking it high. Ford grabs him. And Ford rebounds with a handball. Hake tried to get it to Reid. Conlon went without it. Hamilton, Conlon, cleverly done. McKinnon to Conlon. Borchardt and Fry. Brilliantly smothered by Hamilton. Now Morris has got to test his leg. Round his body. Luders. Gee, this is a good start, Robert. They played very well. That was well judged, Mark. He held back to the last second and flew around the side of Gary Ford. I've got the feeling that Gary Ford not at all confident to go for the ball. He'll have to put his hands a lot more strongly at it if he's going to defeat Roger Luders in the air. Luders much closer. Slightly more difficult angle. Again, he's missed. Of course, these are very important kicks for goal, too. Bruce into the breeze. If they can score a couple, it'll mean more that Sturt have to score with it. And they're not playing well enough at the moment to get into attack the double blues. Heinrich looks for Spiel. De Jong at the back. Bennett's having a big game already. Sims got a bad bounce. Ford went without it. Williams off the ground to Luders. Morris. Heinrich with him. It's going to be a ball up almost in the goal square. Is Gary Ford looking a little bit tentative at the moment. Jeff Morris picking himself up. So it'll be a bounce down about 15 metres from goal. The West Adelaide goal, that is. Williams from behind. It's Sims, though, who gets the knock down. And there'll be another stalemate. So another bounce. Same place. Sims put his body in very well then. Quite a number of players around the ball. Ian Borchardt back at the centre for West Adelaide, waiting for a kick to come out. That's a good knock by Williams to Linder. He gets it under his boot. Fisted away, though, by Reed. Williams picks it up. No one doing much at the moment except fighting for the ball. It still hasn't gone over the behind line. So there'll be another bounce down. Neil Curley in the stand looking on. It's been a long time. He's on the right-hand side of that corner, of course, since he's won a grand final, since 73, but much longer since he's won one with West Adelaide, since 61. So a rush behind. West Adelaide doing all the attacking. They've been playing just over seven minutes, and they're two points, and Sturt hasn't scored. Gary Ford, the full-back. He's a lovely kick. And this is no exceptions. He comes to the centre. Goes straight over the top of the Ruckman. Hamilton knocking it forward. Ross is out there. Painter runs at the ball and leaves it behind. Rosser recovers. Very high. Heinrich from behind. Tapping it forward to Mike Smith. Smith to the goal square. Luders flying. Ford off hands. Calmly gives it away. Russell Hutton. Ready for it. This is the Hutton. The team play is usually very good and he goes to centre half forward. Michael Graham. 31 years of age. Has played exceptionally well the last two weeks. He's been a prolific kick getter. His pace has always been good. It's a strong kick. And the third centre half forward has marked 40 metres from goal. It's his second chance. His first kick was good, lobbed in the goal square. This one will definitely have to be good as the Blues need to get on the scoreboard. So Peter Motley feeling the nerves. 
jabs at the ball, didn't let his leg go at all, right through it, so Sturt have scored, they're one point, West Adelaide two points. Just 28 goals to Motley this season, the other centre half forward, Linders kicked 72, but we must remember Motley hasn't played all year in that position. Spill and De Jong, Howard, thumped on by De Jong, it's Hamilton, and a ball in. Malcolm Greenslade, the runner for Sturt. Had a long talk to Greg Whittlesey a moment ago. I'm not sure what message he was relaying from John Howard. So Frank Spiel and Dirk De Jong. Spiel in front, knocks it over the back. It's a good knock. Watson recovering first. He's pushed in the back. He'll take the free, gives it away. Kicking forward is Peter Winter. Mike Smith. Recruited from Melbourne. Gary Ford reads the kick best. Takes the mark. It's a little bit more confident movement by Gary Ford, the Sturt fullback. Motley leads. And makes it. Is this a superb mark? Coming over the top of Peter Motley then. Peter Motley a little upset about it. It'll be 15 metres. So this is a big start by Motley. He missed the goal, but he's in form. It'll be another 15 unless McKinley can get out the way, he does. Screw punt, and he's kicked it well. Davies, Burgess, Watson, to Peter Winter, to Ian Borchard. Nowhere to go. Watson ran for him, got a bounce. Candelaftis runs for him, and then looks for Lindner, and Lindner's got it. This is his first touch. Luder's on a lead, Ford. Luders, Morris and Hutton, still Morris, tucked away in the pocket, Williams with no Smith. Well played, Jeffrey Morris. A beautiful bit of play in that half-back line, then Bruce with that handball out of defence by West Adelaide. And the kick coming forward then, just around the corner, Mike Smith in front, receives what would be termed perhaps a lucky one, but he was in front and that's why he got it. And goals. West Adelaide 1-2. Smith has got the first goal of the 1983 Grand Final. That was a fantastic bit of play from half-back. It was Larry Watson, who was in all sorts of trouble when he got the ball across, and then when it got up into the pocket finally, Jeffrey Morris coming around his body, kicks it, and Mike Smith in front. So Jeffrey Morris, he's averaged 2.3 goals during 83 for a career average of 1.43. It's 8-1, to one. West in front in the grand final, into the breeze. Spiel with a tap. Peter Winter. Borchard. The captain's got some time. Not a good kick. Peter Winter having a good start. Round his body. Lindner with plenty of space. Winds himself up. Or Sims did that beautifully. He was with Williams all the way. Williams grabbing hold of him. Trevor Sims certainly going to play it tightly. Sturt still, still can't get going. Umpire's called him to play on, and he goes to the centre of the ground. Spiel in front. He doesn't touch it. Coming through is Daryl Brown. High to the goal square. Davies is underneath it. Spoiled away by Burgess. Derrington the rover there. Burgess follows up well. Derrington round his body to the square. Through for a behind. So Sturt, two points now. West Adelaide, one, two. That ball bouncing at right angles through the behinds. Burgess will bring it back in. Almost 12 minutes gone. Get some distance into the breeze. De Jong and Spiel run into one another. Peter Winter again. Bennett. Almost runs it over the line. Not quite. Hamilton and Whittlesey. Now Spiel. Again, Hamilton, Howard and Morris. Whittlesey on the up to Wilson, to Graham. He takes Borchardt on, Borchardt's got him. And then Painter kicks the ball over the line. Thought it might have been out of bounds on the full, but obviously not. It must have been out of bounds before he kicked it. That was very careless. I don't think the umpire was looking. John Painter, believing there was a free kick back up the ground, just kicked it away wildly. Peter Mot Motley in front. Ball kicked back towards centre half forward. And Ian Borchardt's dropped into the space, and he takes the mark. Goes wide, fifth kick. Hutton from the back. And again, a ball in. So it's a very slow start to this grand final for the Double Blues. Breeze has been gusty throughout the day, but 
Mum would think it would be worth 15 metres in the kick. De Jong. Borchardt again. He punches that ball to Lindner. Oh, Fry did it beautifully. And again. And then punches it to Graham. And then Graham takes on some of it and goes long. Davies is underneath it. He's got it. Brown was in the pocket on his own then. Motley. When Michael Graham ran through the centre, Daryl Brown was on his own on the left and Michael Graham didn't see him. Rick Davies fumbling the ball. Obviously didn't fumble it over the line, otherwise the goal umpire would have, would have awarded one point. Peter Motley. West Adelaide, one, two, eight points. Michael Graham through the centre after Eddie Fry had played it magnificently at centre half back. Rick Davies looking for that 150th goal. He almost grabbed one in the goal square about five minutes ago. It's a good grab. Obviously, the umpire saying he'd controlled it before it went over the line. And Peter Motley in his second season and averaging 22 disposals, having a good start to the game. So Dirk De Jong comes off the ground, Peter Murad on, Craig Williams into the ruck, and it's he that knocks it down. But only to see Jim Derrick can get a free kick for holding the man and the Sturt Rover from the centre. Over half forward. Davies on a lead. He's high in the air. Can't complete the mark. Brown takes it off hands to Painter. The handball's too fast for him to control, and Tony Burgess takes the ball out of bounds in the forward pocket for Sturt. The scores are all level. 15 minutes into this first quarter. So Williams and Motley will do the ruck work. Motley's been given a big job. Centre half forward and a lot of the ruck work. Williams easily to Watson. Oh, Motley, great tackle. Brown, Painter. May have been touched off the boot. No, out of bounds on the foot. So John Painter a little slow getting that onto his boot. He's a natural left footer. Now Drea, after Burgess gave it to him. McKinnon and Pake. West winning the wings. Robin McKinnon, recruited from the southeast, Mount Gambier this year. Michael Graham dropping up the centre, the ball floating in the air. He grabs hold of Mike Smith whilst he's not in possession. He gets a free. He's right in the centre of the ground. The centre half forward. Fry underneath it. Linda from behind. And it's Eddie Fry who takes the mark. Interstate representative Eddie Fry. Got great talents. It's a magnificent kick. Either foot. And he booms one. Painter and Watson. Still Painter. Short to Motley. Oh, what talent. He's giving Drea the stick at the moment. Fifth kick. Let's kick 1-1. One, one. 35 metres out. It's a goal. Sturt in front. 2-2, west of 1-2. Very unselfish bit of play in the centre of the ground then by Michael Graham as he let John Painter take that ball off hands after John Painter had bodied back underneath the player, bringing it down in front of him, then Michael Graham stepping out of the road, just let him go around him, and then with a well-controlled kick which Mark Dreher could do nothing about, Peter Motley took the mark and he did a very, very accurate and strong kick. His father kicked seven goals in a grand final many years ago for Port Adelaide and Sturter a goal in front, Derrington to Painter, well, Motley didn't judge that. Burgess, I think he may have been waiting for Davies. And Burgess tears off and looks for McKinnon. Smith having a lot of touches. A great take by Smith, Bruce. Derrington, left foot. Hollis and Summerton. Still Hollis. He's a left footer. He's got great speed. And goes to Davies. Brown. Gives it across to Howard. Goal. Step two in front. Three two to one two. What a transition there is in the game. And this is typical of the Sturt Captain. Their ability as a team to get some good team play together. We saw it then with Paul Hollis with a fine individual effort on the half forward flank as he ran around and then got the ball forward. And then finally, Brown, judging from the front of the pack, gets it across to Brendan Howard, and the former Sturt skipper kicks the goal. Brendan Howard, of course, 30 years of age in his 11th season with the Blues. 
And so it's Spill and Williams. It's 20 to 8 at the moment. With Sturt two goals in front. Borchard. And again a ball up. So after this very slow start, Sturt has kicked three goals in four minutes. So Spiel and Williams coming from the same side this time. Williams with his left hand towards Grosser. Not a good bounce for him. Bennett over the ball. He can't take it, so there'll be another bounce down in the centre. Same Ruckman. Williams and Spiel. Spiel to Wilson. Wilson hitting it forward. Mike Smith gets it to Bennett. Over half forward. Linder on the lead. Flies with him. Linder evades. This is what he can do. He can turn beautifully and the kick strong towards Luders. Russell Hutton, the Sturt defender. Good mark. High drop punt. Pake, McKinnon and Whittlesey. Hamilton read it beautifully. Murette wants it in the pocket. Linder in the front spot. Free kick going to Murette against Ford. It's always a very difficult decision for the umpire there whether Murat's shepherding and the ball's not within five metres or whether in fact Ford's interfering. So Morris, always a good kick, Jeff Morris. This will be difficult. Sims underneath it. The ball, in fact, bounces on the line and again, it's still in play. Now out. Ball bounced twice on the line. You wouldn't believe it with the shape of the Australian football. This is able to bounce anywhere. That's the very difficult part about the game, of course, and some of the skills of the players are exceptional in their ability to control it as it's running around. So Neil Curley, a little worried after a fine start. Heinrich, Painter, is caught. Picked up and snapped for goal by Bruce Linder and threw for a behind to West Adelaide there. Now one goal, 3-9, Sturt, 3-2, 20. Five shots to four. Sturt won the toss, kick to the southern end. Bruce Lindner having a stint at full forward. Eddie Fry with him. Brown on a lead. McKinnon. Brown fell over. McKinnon goes over the top. All four did it well. Not a good handball though. Murek took a dive and got a free kick. He's off. He's going to play it on to one bounce. And he's missed. Peter Murek playing in his last game today for West Adelaide. He's missed the goal, and it's 1-4 to 3-2. With Philip Heinrich to bring the ball back in for Sturt. Ten points the difference. Sturt with a strong breeze. Perhaps slightly across the ground, but definitely favouring their end. Craig Williams, the ruckman now, with an opportunity to run for it. This ball is covered over half the ground, some 90 metres. Ian Borchart. Leon Grosser in front, spoiled away from him. Painter picks it up. Hamilton can't get a hand on it. Whittlesey to centre half forward. Michael Graham's there again. He's read the ball well. Can't complete the mark. Dreer coming across strongly, does it well, and taps the ball out of bounds to give West Adelaide another opportunity from a ruck throw in to start. Grant Zubrin getting ready to come on. I think Tim Pake might be the player to come off. He's pulled a muscle, Bruce. Pake, they took a chance with him last week. He came off before half time, was able to come back. Motley and Williams. Williams easily to Borchard. A floater. Well, Morris has started well. He's waited a long time to play in a grand final. High kick. Fry and Linda. Spiel helped out in the front. Linda gets a high one. Almost went to play on with a handball. Looks for Lude as a murette. Fry read it well. And then kicks an 80-metre kick to Motley. Dreer spoiling forward. Four charts there. He's picked up everything at the moment. And Bennett working like a little Trojan on the centre wing. Kicks it to Bernie Conlon. Conlon plays on and slips. Knocks it out. McKinnon. Randall Bennett again. Into the forward pocket. The top spin kick. Peter Reid released for step. Round his body. Wilson couldn't quite make it. Borchard with a fist. Now Wilson. It's been beaten by Bennett. Hollis. It's a good touch. Graham to Motley. Motley to Howard. It sits. Great take. Davies wants it short. Howard goes for the goal and misses. So 1-1 one, one for Howard. 3-3 three, three for Sturt as Pake comes off and Zubernick goes on. Michael Howard could have gone for the short kick across the ground. 
He had John Painter standing in front of the goal on his own, but elected to go forward. So West Adelaide now in the back pocket, and the kick will be taken back there by, I think it's... Cantalaftis. Cantalaftis, the back pocket player. Howard in the middle of a pack. Wants Brown to run for him. He takes Winter on. Then gets it through Cantalaftis' legs, and Cantalaftis fell over, and Durrington fell over the top of him. And he might have been a bit lucky. He plays it on quickly and goes to Peter Winter. Winter into the centre. Peter Murat. Great skills, Murat. Kicks it into the man. That wasn't too skillful on that occasion. He evades the bump from forward, picks it up. Leon Gross has got it now. It's running to the half-forward line. To Hamilton. Hamilton's caught by Heinrich. He's been a wonderful player in the finals in the back pocket. Philip Heinrich, there was some doubt about his career. He doesn't get a free kick. Looking for one. He's played it safe and held up for Sturt. It's on half-back flank. Double Blues, 11 points in front. Williams is winning the rucks from the throw-ins to Bennett. Tenth kick for Bennett. Morris and Sims. Sims took a chance. Zubernick. Hutton. Two bounces. Motley's on a lead. Drea's with him. He's got a big, strong body, Drea. That's a very good bit of play then by Mark Drea. The ability to cover Peter Motley. The kick wasn't all that good. Murek's in the centre on his own. He takes the mark. Watson runs on. Murek to half forward. Looking for Morris. Hutton from behind. He's been in good form. He's in trouble on the rebound. Morris again, get a free kick for in the back. So Jeffrey Morris, West Adelaide certainly after the ball. Eddie Fry not prepared to give a quarter of an inch for Jeff Morris to get off the ground. Holding it up for as long as he can. So Morris into the forward pocket. Off hand to Sims. Luders. So Gross's goal, and West Adelaide at 2-4 to Sturt 3-3, three, three, and that's Gross's first. So West Adelaide playing well as they come into attack again. Jeffrey Morris has been a great winner for them on the half-forward line. The link man in the defence then, of course, Murat. He's the one who got it to half-forward after a wonderful bit of play at centre-half back by Drea. And then when they got it forward, Grosser was in the pocket. He received the handball and converted full points. Williams and Spiel. Into time on. Muret. Conlon. Had more time than that, but decided to go straight to Morris. Kick number six for Jeff Morris. Given no a week ago because of a hamstring injury. Luders. Sims at the back. Gives it to Ford. Wants a free kick. Graham on the up to Reed. Reed balances. Summerton, Motley, and Drea. Hollis. Summerton. High tackle. Plays it on. No, got to come back. So Sturt a 3 3 21. West 2 4 16. 26 minutes into this grand final. It's interesting that the umpire should make that play come back a little while ago. He allowed a player to play on from in front of the play. On this occasion, bring it back behind the mark. So Cantalaftis receives from Summerton. Up the centre of the ground. Graham from behind, fisting it away. Wilson coming in. Kicks it short to Hollis. Hollis on his left foot now with a chance to score for the Blues. He attacks the full face. Davies is there, but it's too long and through for a behind. Sturt a 3-4. West Adelaide 2-4. Just one kick the difference. Tony Burgess will wait for a moment. Craig Williams gets into the position. Spiel in the front. Howard read it well, but Bennett's got him. Made out the handball, Bruce, and didn't give it away on the first go. Craig Williams looks like he might have hurt a finger after going for that mark. It's Smith and Muret. Muret's playing well. One bounce. Hamilton. Very good pick up by Hamilton. Williams is going to come off the ground, I think. Smith just runs around Hutton. Luders and Sims. Still Luders and Sims. Oh, Sims has got some strength as he gets it to Fry. Fry from the back line. 
draws the player, gives it to Zubernik. Zubernik to half forward. And there to take the safe mark, John Candelaftis. Ian Day. Williams' dislocated finger straight down into the club rooms. Looks bad. Off hands to Borchardt. Eddie Fry's getting back. The ball running too fast. Heinrichs in there. He's bundled out of the road. Grosser. Hill whilst not in possession. Free kick to Leon Grosser. The West Adelaide Rover had a very fine season. His kick's accurate and strong to looters. You don't see them any better than that. Well done, Leon Grosser. So West Adelaide now with a chance to go at quarter time with the scores all tied up. Luders has had two shots for goal. Kicked a point with his first and then out of bounds on the four with a second. He's right in front this time. And he's kicked it very badly as the siren sounds. At quarter time at Football Park, third a 3-4-22. West Adelaide a 2-4-16 more in the middle than the Sturt players are. Good news for West Adelaide fans, Bruce and Robert. When he left the field, his finger was at left angles to his knuckle, but uh, it's straight now and he's back on the ground or he's back in play. Good news for West Adelaide. So at the start of the second quarter, it'll be Dirk de Jong that's going to come back onto the ground and compete for the ruck with Frank Spool for Sturt. Dirk de Jong has not played a lot of games this year. Stopped playing halfway through the season. So with the injury to Mark Mick and the big West Adelaide Ruckman, and it's De Jong that gets it forward, recovers it, intercepted by Reed. Hamilton, who had a brilliant second semi-final, showing a lot more pace than he shot before through Linders. And in the back it'll be the Roger Luders. Luders not taking the ball, just choosing to fall forward and dive on top, and he brings Trevor Sims down with him. I suppose that's one of the things that happens, Bruce, if you're playing close to somebody and you're directly behind them, they change their pace at all and go down, you have to go into their back. Well, for West Adelaide, they'll be hoping that Roger Luders can kick much better to the golf course end. Two out of bounds on the fall and one point in the first term. 40 metres out. That looks better. It is. So Luders has goal. 102 now for the season. And scores are level after one minute of the second term. Yes, Roger Luders prolific goal kicker for the West Adelaide side, leaving Trevor Sims behind him on that occasion. Ball coming forward with a wobbly runner was Bruce Linden that couldn't get his hand to the ball, but Luders was in front, and he's kicked 4.59 goals average this year in what has been a wonderful season. 22 apiece, Spiel favoured by the bounce. Hamilton, Conlon off the ground. Muret and Ford. Still Muret. Borchardt if he wants him, goes for goal and kicks a behind. So Muret scored two points, West Adelaide in front, 3-5, Sturt 3-4. Peter Muret showing great evasive skills. For West Adelaide, one point in front. High in the air by Philip Heinrich to the outer side. Spool spoiling it out of bounds. So there'll be a throw in between half forward and the forward pocket for West Adelaide, right in front of the scoreboard. One point the difference, West Adelaide in front. It'll be Spiel and Mike Smith to compete for West Adelaide. Spiel just lays it over the top. Derrington again as he recovers as Painter can't take his first handball. He kicks to the centre of the ground. Hollis in front, backing up is De Jong. Howard tackles. De Jong's handball not accurate, but Watson's there. And with plenty of time, Linda Short tries to half volley it. Then off the ground to Bennett. In that first quarter, Howard puts himself across the body. Still Linder tried to get Summerton's body. Derrington barges his way through. Smith and Reed. Morris with a right footer. That might bounce through. No, a behind. So Morris with a behind. Sturt player in a bit of trouble. Jim Derrington at half back. And West LA doing all the attacking, leading by two points. Let's hope that Derrington's all right because Pake's already left the field. Leonard, Leonard might be getting ready to come on. Looks like it could be a stretcher job, Robert. Yes, he looks as though he's certainly in a bit of trouble. Jim Derrington, Sturt Rover. One thing Sturt can't afford to lose is their Rovers. They haven't been strong in this department. They recruited Craig Barbary at the start of the year to help, and he hasn't been able to make the team this afternoon. And it was Jim Derrington who handballed the ball over his head when he was hit. Tackled player falling on top of him. Maybe he could have even broken the rib, there's no telling. So the Jordan frame.
Holmes about to come out for Jim Derrington. Except I think they've turned him over, Bruce. I don't think he's in too much strife now. I think he might have just badly winded. The game being held up for quite some time. The umpire will hold it up, of course, if there is a stretcher on the ground. Normally it will continue. So Jim Derrington. I think he probably recovered, Bruce. He may have just been badly hit. At the moment, West Adelaide are playing very well, though, Bruce. They've certainly taken control of the game across the defensive line and up forward they're looking very very dangerous Sturt runner Malcolm Greenslade former champion goal kicker with the club and went to Glenelg with John Halbert there's Neville Cunningham the chairman of selectors at the club and Jeff Lennon getting ready still taking some time with Jim Derrington so with Pake off the ground obviously in trouble with his hamstring Zubernick onto a wing and Derrington about to come off and Leonard about to come on. Of course, Sturt overcame difficulties last week to win the preliminary final. They looked almost down and out at one stage. So applause for Jim Derrington as he leaves the ground. The applause, of course, won't mean much to Jim, having played all the year, and now finding himself carried from the ground. With a bit of luck, he may be back in with us. And certainly a very serious injury and something that Sturt didn't need to happen at this early stage and strangely enough to kick the ball in will be Philip Heinrich who's played as a rover maybe Sturt will be forced to use him later on Leonard goes immediately to the forward pocket Spiel gets underneath it De Jong at the back Fry Hamilton is winning the centre Zubernick runs the ball out of bounds he's certainly getting to the ball very well Richard Hamilton Greg Whittlesey not able to read it, looking for the kick over the top, but Hamilton's getting in there as it hits the ground. Spiel and De Jong. Spiel won that easily. Brown. Reed. Comes across the ground. Howard playing from the back. Winter in the front. Hollis. Winter attract tap the forward to Leonard De Graham. Now he can run all the way. Drop pun is strong and long and home. Sturdy. The Flash has kicked his first, and it's 4-4 to 3-6. We've seen an example there of the attacking play of West Adelaide. The halfback flankers running up the ground to get the ball. Michael Graham chose to leave it three against four, and he stood out in the space, hoping for the handball, and it came out from Jeff Leonard. And Michael Graham steadied himself beautifully, had a look at it before he kicked it, controlled the ball through, and the little Sturt champion, now in his twilight years, shows just what he's made of. Average disposal's 18 in his 12th season. De Jong and Spiel with Sturt four points in front. Hamilton. Grosser. Heinrich just stood back and took a chance. Then fell over. He's got Painter short. Hamilton bears down on him. Interfering from behind on the spoil. If he'd have gone for the mark, he definitely wouldn't have been penalised. John Painter kicks it straight into Leon Grosser. Rosser to Bernie Conlon, his co-rover. Heinrich coming in strongly. Rosser rides it. Heinrich recovering the ball. Brown now. Fairly hectic bit of play as Fry comes in and ducks his head under it. Very lucky not to be caught holding the ball. Eddie Fry just dropping the ball down and lying on it. Good umpire in there, Robert, because we saw Conlon and Fry both duck for cover and not be paid a free kick. De Jong with a tap. Whittlesey having a quiet start. Painter to Brown. To Painter. The advantage is played. Howard, Graham, no, it's going to come back to Howard. There's another instance of the mark, you see, he has to take it from behind. There's a free kick, definitely would have gone on. Tucked away in the pocket, Davies too short. Howard goes for the goal. Motley, Dreer, Hollis, McKinnon, now Summerton. And West Adelaide get out of it. And there'll be a ball in with Sturt leading by four points. Just noticed Ian Borchardt working very hard then, Bruce, back at the centre of the ground to receive that ball. If West Adelaide got a quick kick out, Ian Borchardt, he's just come up to the forward pocket now to help De Jong. Hollis. Umpire not paying a free kick on that occasion as Summerton picks it up. Zubernick round his body towards Davies. He's in front. Michael Graham's there off hands. Free kick he'll get. Leaves the ball alone. Very similar to the one Roger Luders was paid at the other end of the ground. So Michael Graham choosing not to go for the ball. Allows the player coming from behind to interfere with him. So now Sturt with an opportunity there. Four points in front. 4-4 four, four to 3-6. There's the little Sturt champion that's already kicked one goal. Just 20 metres out. 
had a magnificent final series. And he's put Sturt 10 points in front. Graham's kicked two within two minutes, and it's 5-4 to 3-6. Well, Grant Zuber has given Sturt a little bit on that wing there. They've picked up something now. Bruiser was he that kicked the ball in. They were getting beaten well across the centre of the line when Tim Pake was there. So, Michael Graham. Great player he's been, getting a free kick, playing for it, no doubt, but being awarded it. Ian Day. Day. Jimmy Derrington's in the casualty room. He's slightly concussed. Too early to tell whether he'll be back on the turf or not. Or chart. High in the air by McKinnon. To half forward. Heinrich coming out. Runs straight into Lindner. And it'll be Lindner who gets a free kick on this occasion for in the back. Luders in the square. Lindner's a very long kick. Powerful man. Luders gives him a lead. Sims came around the front, fry at the back. Ball must have covered 70 metres. And again a ball in. Ten points of difference. Still covering to that bottom end, but the flags on top of the scoreboard, Bruce, are a little bit fluky now. I don't think the wind's quite as strong. Smith in the front spot. Wilson was a good take. Ford runs it to the boundary line, in fact. Finds the boundary umpire with a left-handed handball. And again a ball in. With Malcolm Greenslade out there talking to Philip Heinrich. Leonard it looks like he's having a run on the ball be roving Murek comes around to the front Fry who's had a very good start to this game Whittlesey and Hamilton Spiel and De Jong De Jong fists away Glosser still Glosser on the run drop punt goal West LA 4-6 to 5-4 and Glosser's got two well, it was Robin McKinnon that did the job then on Frank Spiel and Spiel went to recover it was McKinnon who jumped high in the air and charged it Frank Spill. Spill didn't like it either. And really probably not okay with player leaving the ground with a full chested charge and smacking him in the head. The umpire taking no notice of it. But Leon Grosser, ever ready, picked it up and converted. And so West Adelaide are still there. Four points of difference. Spill and De Jong. Leonard. Or oh, Wilson crashed his way through to Graham. Zubernik. Tried to get to Hollis. Watson to Bennett. Borchard waits for it. Bennett again. Then controls the leg. Morrison Hutton. It's going to be a ball in. Centre square, all important, Robert. We're starting to get on top there with Hamilton again playing well. Yes, they are, but I just felt that Sturt had an opportunity then, Bruce, and Grant Zubrick not prepared to take hold of the ball and give it, tried to tap it on, and he underhit it, and West Adelaide have gone into attack off the error. Sims in the front, S Smith at the back, Borchard round his body, Muret, and he'll kick the goal, and has. 5-6-5-4, five, five, Muret's kicked his first, and West Adelaide is back in front. Well, the West Adelaide player was entitled to a 15-metre penalty anyway, then when the Sturt player pushed him after he'd marked the ball, he's not entitled to interfere, but Muret just take advantage of that, as he spun away and ran at the goal, and converted for full points, just ran off, it would have been better if the Sturt back pocket player, Philip Hyland, perhaps had grabbed him, Bruce. At least it would have made him go back and have a set kick. He's had 16 disposals on an average this year. Peter Muret played a very, very good season too. And he'll be looking forward to winning this game. 36 to 34 with Sturt trailing by two points. And Spiel and De Jong. De Jong won the tap. Grosser. Luders. It's a 15-metre penalty. West Adelaide players running up and clapping. Trevor Sims. You saw it at home, I'm not too sure. There was too much in it. Luders, of course, very acrobatic, leaves the ground. And any contact will make him fall. He needs to convert this one. Maybe Sims will be able to laugh if he misses. Goes right in the middle of the boat. And Roger Luders kicks West Adelaide six goal. They're 6-6-42. Six, six, Sturt 5-4-34. And so after a shaky start, Luders has now kicked two goals. West having a big run out of the centre square. They did this against Nord in the second term. Sims coming in to spoil. Oh, gee, Roger Luders, I think he might have been lucky. He probably would have goaled anyway because he's got the breeze at his back. So West, a couple of lucky breaks. McKinnon interfering with Spill, not paid. Luders with a 15-metre penalty. Yes, and player before the game said, it's luck that's required. So Spiel 
and De Jong. De Jong knocking it forward. Smith, Hamilton, West Adelaide now in full cry from the centre. You picked it a moment ago, Bruce. Ford can't take the mark. Murette playing it with skill. Kicks to the goal square. Beautiful control. Controlled by Peter Muret. There's seven six, third of five four. Or oh, they can taste that premiership already. There's a long way to go. But Hamilton's playing a big game in the centre. And Peter Muret, who says that he won't play for West Adelaide next year, he'll go back to Broken Hill, but oh, he's having a taste of big time football here today, which he really hasn't in the past. Bill and De Jong. De Jong knocking it to the side. Grantley Filkey's on for West Adelaide. He kicks it to the half forward line. And it's out of bounds. Filkey, a very, very good player too. A lot of pace. Played well in the second semi-final when he came on as a wingman half forward. So it's out of bounds on the half forward line for West Adelaide. Spiel and De Jong. De Jong in charge of the ruck at the moment. Leonard. Graham. Back to Leonard. On to Whittlesey. Painter's on to half forward. Candleft is coming across quickly as Painter goes to the pocket. Hollis is there with Summerton's right on his tail. Hollis playing the ball ahead of him. Brown now with an opportunity. He can't get it. And it's knocked out of bounds by Watson. So a bit of hectic play there. But Sturt able to force it forward. Couldn't get any rhythm going though. West Adelaide defence right on the job. Biggest margin in the game so far. 14 points. West has kicked five goals with this breeze. Burgess over the back to Filkey. Zubernik tries to use his body outnumbered and Borchardt takes it on the third attempt. Tenth kick for Borchardt. Lindner backed into Fried. Got a free kick, might have been lucky. Things going for West Adelaide. Lindner goes high and long. Muret's under it. Sims took a chance. Luda stayed down. Reed's got him. Sims after it. Muret into his back and Sims is going to get a free kick. Well, Trevor Sims the lucky one on this occasion. Michael Graham gives him a lead. He goes to the outer side, looking for Fry. Over the top, it's a good kick. Fry chooses not to mark it. He's tapping it forward. Spiel now. But Eddie Fry, a free kick, holding the man. He's on the half-back flank, outer side. Kicks it out of bounds on the full. He had Grant Zubernick with enough space there. In a weak, weak paddock. But the kick, most inaccurate. So Sturt really feeling the pressure now as West Adelaide apply it. De Jong, well time kick. Lindner, now Morris, round his body. Heinrich sits back on it. Graham was going to come out to the member side. He's still coming. He's getting away from Leonard, I think that's the reason. No, Heinrich decides he doesn't want Leonard. McKinnon's marked it. I think they'd be better off to have played. He had three players in the centre of the ground and chose not to kick it to anything. A little bit of doubt and confidence. Ludus fell over. Sims forgot to run at him this time. Which makes you wonder about the other ones, Bruce. So Sims, short to Leonard. Should have just got to get some movement now. They need to get it to Motley and Davies. Painter. Oh, did it well. Motley. Painter. To Brown. Drop punt. Behind. Brown has his first score it's 5-5 five, five to 7-6 because he's had a good season up in that forward line Daryl Brown he's got a bit of pace he couldn't quite get his body up straight to convert that so the kick in by Tony Burgess straight down the centre of the ground beautiful kick spoiled away Borchardt again he's played a great game already this afternoon Muret Borchardt runs on Muret dummies to him then goes to Borchardt Borchardt with an opportunity to score West Adelaide in full cry. 19 points of difference. West Adelaide fans have waited a long time for a premiership. They're getting a great exhibition today. Borcha, what a game he's playing with Muret. Firstly the dummy, and then to the skipper. And from 50 metres out on the run, he punches that drop punt strongly and straight. And Ian Borchard's put his side 19 points up. Spiel and De Jong. Spiel this time. McKinnon, though, with a beautiful half volley to half forward. 
Try in front. Linda off hands. Forward trying for Burrett picks it up. He's too slow getting it away. Heinrich. Now Fry with an opportunity to relieve for Sturt. A little bit more confident but not accurate. Candle left us. De Jong. Free kick to De Jong. Leaves the ball alone. Felt the player coming from behind him. Well done. He's got Crosser. Now he's got Filky. Winter runs for him. Now can the back pocket kick the goal? He's given Luders a chance. No, just kept on going and hit the behind post. So Sims will bring it back in. Robert Sturt can't get a winner in the centre. And that square as De Jong comes off for Williams. It's right across the for two wings that the call is in the trouble, Bruce. West Adelaide are well in front on those two positions. Randall Bennett playing exceptionally well. De Jong going on. Craig Williams off. Sims high. Hamilton flew. McKinnon with a big punch away. Went through Smith's legs. Morris. Left foot. Just missed. And Jeffrey Morris today has kicked two behinds, both in this term. And West 8 7, 15 scoring shots to 10. 5 5. 6 3. They've kicked this quarter, West Adelaide. Playing very well. So Tim Pate getting ready to come back onto the ground. Probably Gary Ford will have a breather. Pake's played in the back pocket. High kick by Fry this time. Spiel in front. Knocked on by Borchar. Little Randall Bennett. Prolific kick getter. Wide from Grant Zubernick. Short to Painter. Run on Ruckman. Takes the ball. Watson and Leonard. Leonard over the top. West Adelaide recovering. They're certainly very desperate at the moment. Randall Bennett. He's a link man for every play that's coming through the centre. Taps it out when he slips over the ground. Obviously fairly firm and a little slippery. Leonard to Whittlesey. Whittlesey towards Graham. Davies in the square. Graham gets it to him. Tacana left us. Oh, gee, that looked hard. Howard Zubernick did it well. And again, Graham. And Sturt's winner at the moment, Michael Graham. Well, I think they're a bit re reluctant, um, West Adelaide, to leave Rick Davies on his own too much. And it means, of course, that uh, Michael Graham got the opportunity down in front. He's going to be a loose man if they've got two back with Davies. Just kick two, 40 metres out. High drop punt. It's straight and it's a goal. Graham's kick three. It's 6-5 to 8-7. So Rick Davies probably a little unlucky then not to be um, allowed that mark, but I thought he definitely dummied the play on. There was no doubt he was going to do it. He took another stride around. He was looking to come back with the feint. It was well done by the West Adelaide defence. But the Sturts, good fortune, Michael Graham received it on the rebound and he scored and he's kicked three goals this quarter. Spill and Williams in the ruck, 55 to 41. And again a bounce up. It'll be Spill again against Williams. John Halbert, just sees bald head there. Surrounded by Sturt officials. Watson did that beautifully. McKinnon's had a big game. They're winning the wings, as Robert said. McKinnon will charge to the goal. And kick it out on the floor. One strike too many. Grant Zubinick making a lot of ground. Grant Zubinick could run on to receive for Sturt when they had looked like getting possession. McKinnon ran the other way in the hope that Westies would. And he won. So Trevor Sims, half-back flank. Davies up on the ball. Not getting a smell though. Brown now to Painter. To Brown. Brown short towards Hollis. Hollis in front, free kick for a high hit. There'll be a 15 metre penalty as Bruce Linder interferes with Paul Hollis. Nothing serious. Kicks to the pocket. Michael Graham again. Beautiful kick. And Michael Graham now with an opportunity. It's too far out, I think, Bruce. Yes, he'll need his absolute best, and a bit more, I think, Robert. Rick Davies on the ball, and Spiel in the goal square. The breeze is nowhere near as strong, though, so who knows? Screw punt. Spiel in the front spot. It's a good kick in the end by Graham. 
for four through for behind. So Sturt keep hanging in there, Robert. It's six, six to eight, seven. Yes, if they can get another goal with 23 minutes into the quarter. Neil Curley, hands to head. And the kick in, giving the opportunity now for West Adelaide's Filky. He kicks it towards Morris. And it's out of bounds in front of the members stand here at Football Park. Australia too well down, done down in front of us, Bruce. It's a great moment in sport, wasn't it? it? Certainly was. Rick Davies and Craig Williams. Williams knocking it forward. Hutton in the road. Gets the handball out. Davies. No hope of getting rid of it. So Davies being given a run. Sturt looking for a bit. Rick Davies hasn't got the height, but he's certainly here. And Craig Williams have got the strength against each other. Davies gives it to Painter. The handball's inaccurate. It's Hamilton that gets it to Watson. Quick kick, Hake underneath it, takes the mark. Pretty sure Condon's a player off, Robert for West, with Filky on. Hollis from the back. Hamilton did that well. He got in the road of Whittlesey, and then Bennett gave it to Summit and to Filky, and he can go all the way here. No, he goes to Luders. Absolutely no hope then, Bruce. That Randall Bennett's playing a game of his life. He and Ian Borchardt through the centre line. Randall Bennett has picked up so many kicks. So Roger Luders has kicked two goals. One point and two out of bounds on the fall, but he's kicked very straight at the southern end. He's kicked 103 goals this year. He's kicked 104 goals this year. And it's 9-7 to 6-6. Six, six. So it was West Adelaide that scored the goal that Sturt needed. Sturt were going to be right with them at half-time. They certainly needed that goal to be 8-7 down rather than 9-6. West Adelaide with control through the centre of the ground. And Grantley Filkey has come on. He was going to go for goal, but he gave Luders the opportunity. He had two choices. He chose Luders, and Luders didn't let him down with full points. So 24 average disposals to little Randall Bennett. What a great game he's played. 61 to 42. Davies goes early. Williams wins it to Hamilton to Grosser. To the goal square. Sims did well. Fry. Hutton. In trouble. Fry. Lindner should go. Left foot. He has. The president has goal. And West Adelaide have taken a big, big grip on this final now. 10-7 to 6-6. Well, Eddie Fry gave an inaccurate handball. But you can't be inaccurate in front of goal. Sims just laid it down very well for Fry. Fry had it under control, ball in hand, and then gave it away loosely at Hutton's feet. And Morris got in there in time just to get it away. And then Fry not strong enough in the close quarters. And Linda snapping it on his left foot. Bruce Linder, who's had a wonderful season after winning the Reserves McGarry medal last year, 3.45 his average goals this season. Davies in the ruck, trying to lift his side. Williams again easily to Hamilton. West controlling the centre and the wings. Painter. He's got to kick long and hope. Cantalaftis. Sits for him nicely. Summerton. Round his body. It's a good defensive kick. Howard. Shrugs off Williams. Drea's on top of Motley in this turn. Controls the leg. West playing with great confidence now. Mark Dreer showing some of the skill that he's displayed, particularly in the latter half of this season when he's been a wonderful player. Into the forward line, and Borchardt's there again. The West Adelaide captain. 13 kicks, Robert. Into the square. Trevor Sims reading it well, and a strong mark. Great team man, Trevor Sims. His kicking, perhaps, that isn't as good as most players. His ability to get the ball is no question. Half-back flank. Davies from behind. Fists it away from Borchardt. Borchardt recovers. Comes across the ground. Smothered by Howard. Hamilton's there. Graham, though, intercepts. Now an opportunity for Linder as he gets to Murat. Murat along the ground to Hamilton. Hamilton back to Murat. Murat very accurately to Grosser. Grosser over the top to Morris. Puts him on his left leg. His natural foot out of way to West Adelaide. Jeffrey Morris. Full points, 11-7 to West Adelaide, 6-6 to Sturt. West has kicked 9-3 in this term to 3-2. They've turned it on again at Football Park like they did a fortnight ago. Murat's football here was superb.
Hamilton. What a game he's playing in the centre. Muret really enjoying himself. And Grosser held it up and held it up for Morris. And Morris didn't let him down. And he scored the goal. And Leon Grosser, who's also won a McGarry medal in reserves competition, is averaging 20 disposals and over two goals a game as West Adelaide charged towards this grand final at 73 to 42. So Rick Davies still in the ruck. Perhaps he's been there too long. Spill staying down in there, having had a rest. Davies high, but Williams higher. Reed. Larry Watson to settle for the Wolves, for the Bloods. A bit of everything these days, Bruce. Watson goes long, wants Lindner. Borchard. 14th kick coming up. Make that 15. High. Lude is underneath it. Howard having a run on the ball. Maybe playing in defence. Certainly not in the forward pocket. Hollis. Still with Hollis. Zubrinik. Gets away from McKinnon. Brown gets rid of Cantalaftis. To Motley. Quick kick by Motley's missed. To behind. Peter Motley's kick 2-2. Two -two. Sturt want one very badly. It's 6-7 to 11-7. And playing 29 minutes. To Tony Burgess, the fullback, to bring the ball back in. Filky leading wide to the outer side. Burgess goes long to the centre. Drea strongly. Motley to Graham. Play on. Graham evades. Oh, he's too good. And he's getting another one. So Michael Graham with four goals this quarter. Trying his utmost to keep the Blues in the race. They're 7-7. West Adelaide 11-7. Michael Graham's kicked all the goals for Sturt in this term. That drew, in fact, interfered with Peter Motley. Grabbed him by the leg, and that's why the hesitation. Michael Graham looking for the umpire's decision and getting around Muret, and oh, what a quarter he's played. And from 40 metres out, he punched it and kicked the goal, so Sturt within four. So Davies still in the ruck. Craig Williams for West Adelaide. Williams high again. Davies not able to get off the ground. Reed to Zubernick. Painter's on with a handball. Motley to the pocket. Drea's with him. Motley to Leonard. Leonard sinks his foot into it. But it's run across the face of goal and out of bounds. Two players in front of goal then. Daryl Brown and Michael Graham. Ignored. What a superb piece of play by Peter Motley to get it to Leonard. So the Devil Blues might get one before half-time. Filky, still in play. Whittlesey gives away a free kick. So Whittlesey being shifted out of the centre. It's Brendan Howard that's in there at the moment. We saw him a moment ago. Number nine, Greg Whittlesey. The kick forward. Davies underneath it. Hamilton ducking underneath him. The handball's wild, a bit hairy. Something's put down by Painter with a nice hip and shoulder. Hutton now gets it across to Zubernick. Sturt with another opportunity to Motley. Great kick. Will the siren go? 31 minutes. Of course, we had a stretch here this quarter. Jim Derrington left the ground. Kick by Motley holding up. Spills there. He can't mark it. Graham in front. But Westies are too good through Candle after us. To Peter Winter. To Randall Bennett. Holds up his leg. Not a good kick, though. Howard should take it. No free kick paid. Hamilton gets rid of Wilson. Howard gets into Hamilton and it's going to be a ball up. I had a quick look at the umpires then. Rick Kinnear looked at Laurie Argent. Well, I think Kinnear thought he marked it, but Argent was closer to the play. And so they both caught on their reflex and no one paid it. Williams and Davies. Hamilton. has won the centre easily. Oh, Davies has got him. No free kick. It's going to be a ball in. This score by West Adelaide in this second term is a record for a grand final in South Australia. Nine goals, Bruce. Peter, Peter, Peter went to 8-2 was the previous best. Holding the ball against Jeff Leonard. No one retarded him. The tackle not being put on. The umpire decided he's holding the ball for some reason. It's very difficult to work out. West Adelaide into attack again. Jeffrey Morris with a long hand ball. John Painter. Watson. This half-back line and full-back line of West Adelaide holding up, except for Michael Graham, who's kicked all the goals in this term. 
centre wing. Fry takes off early. Or Painter tried to give it away in a hurry. Smith, Morris. Goes long and strong. Luders and Sims. It's still going. Ross is going to kick a goal. He has. The little fellow has kicked three. And West Adelaide at 12-7 to 7-7. Seven, seven. So West Adelaide scored their tenth goal for the quarter. Leon Grosser getting an advantage there. Trevor Sims backing into um, Roger Luders. Luders flying over the top of him. Sims as strong as an ox, of course, didn't falter an inch. Maybe a lesser player may have got a free kick. As he went up and interfered. Sims recovering, but it was Grosser that came in behind ahead of the back pocket player Heinrich and converted for West Adelaide. 79 to 49, 33 minute quarter. A lot of goals kicked, 14 plus Jim Derrington taken off the ground. Painter with a long one. Motley, not paid. Dreer's with him. It's going to be a ball up. Motley not quite able to hold it, Bruce. Sturt are just a little bit fumbly on their takes. Both Rick Davies and Peter Motley had a couple of opportunities. So it's a bounce down. 40 metres out from goal. Spill going for Motley. Motley with the ball, gets it back towards Whittlesey. He runs past it. Watson, he can't get it. Then over the top, it goes towards Bennett. Knocked on by Wilson. Brown now for Sturt. He falls over, brings the player down on top of him and gets a free kick. So Daryl Brown, he's on the half forward line. Too far out to score, short to Leonard. Leonard tucked away in the pocket. Siren must go. 34 minutes played. Doubt whether Leonard could score. He's going to have to score, Bruce. Michael Graham says you've got to kick the goal. And so Jeffrey Leonard with Sturt five goals behind. Won't score. And so at half time, it's West Adelaide 12 7 79, Sturt 7 7 49. Certainly playing to the front of the pack. Sturt have had to uh, 
um, shift Greg Whittlesey from the centre of the ground. Not so much, I think, that Richard Hamilton was controlling him, it was just that he couldn't get to the ball. And uh, the weight of numbers in the centre, and Brendan Howard did a little bit better in that quarter. He had a few touches, but not enough to show any ascendancy to stir across the centre of the ground. Unless they can do that after half-time, no matter how many changes they make in the forward line, they've got to get it up there for Rick Davis to score, and they just not even look like doing it at the moment, Bruce. Well, they started very slowly in that first quarter with the breeze. It was an interesting uh, first term. West Adelaide uh, did very well into it for quite some time and Sturt had some problems scoring goals. When they finally did, they got three of them in a hurry. They did. Uh, certainly came in one hell of a hurry. Um, I don't know what caused them to go so slowly at the start too. They just went forward and finally it was Michael Graham though in the second quarter that was really on the ball. We'll take a break and come back with some highlights of the first half after the break. people here at Football Park today for the grand final and for many of them they're basking in the sun because the temperature in Adelaide at this very moment is 28 degrees centigrade which is very warm for league football and I'm sure to be warm in the Sturt rooms at the moment and also in the West Adelaide rooms. West Adelaide has had a great first half. That first quarter was tight. It was interesting as we said just a goal in it at quarter time but West Adelaide had done very well into the breeze. Knocked on beautifully then. Smith it was that took the ball and handballed it on quickly. Derrington intercepted quickly around his body and then Sturt went back into attack. They hadn't played it all well to this stage. Hollis with a superb individual effort on the centre wing. He was able to get around. The ball was kicked forward and when Davies came out to compete for it, it came over that Brown picked it up and there was Howard just ahead of him and Howard ran in and scored for the Blues there first. And Sturt was starting to get a bit of a run on because they kicked three goals in a four minute period. But West Adelaide did well to kick two into the breeze because it was fairly strong in that first term. Jeff Morris has had a magnificent game. He was under a big cloud for the last fortnight because he did come off in that second semi-final very early on. His kicking has always been a feature of his game. Roger Luders and Trevor Sims are having an excellent duel at the moment. Luders kicking straight in that second term and Grosser is the number one rover on the ground at the moment. He's certainly playing very well, Bruce. He played a, a, has played a good game. It's bad luck that Conlon had to go off, but Sturt 
have lost their first rover in Jim Derrington as well. So Jim Derrington and Bernie Collin, the two rovers for each side, are off the ground. Michael Graham kicked four goals in that second term into the breeze. A match-winning performance on a normal day, but of course, West has kicked ten with it. Hollis did this well. Just tapped it up to Leonard, to Graham. And Graham has kicked just so straight from 50 metres out on the run, made no mistake. Yes, that was one of four he kicked for the quarter, Bruce. Just goes to show individual efforts aren't that important. So Hamilton kicked the ball in towards Murat. And Peter Murat playing the ball, showed great talent. Then just controlled the ball to the goal square. And he put an Ashley Mallet off break onto it. And through it went in true cricketing style. And West Adelaide were ecstatic. And it's from that moment on that they really took off. And they started running. Ian Borchardt's been a superb leader for West Adelaide today. Murat and Borchardt have had a lot of touches between them. And they combined for this goal. Borchardt virtually off one leg and about 50 metres out, making no mistake. And they were in full flight. They were in Ian Borchardt's played a wonderful game. Bruce, he's been the main architect in the centre. There we see Hamilton, who got the ball forward to Grosser, and Grosser attacked the goal square very confidently. And over the looters off hands, Eddie Fry gave a handball to Russell Hutton, which wasn't good, and Hutton fumbled, and with a good pair of hands, it was Bruce Linder that recovered for West Adelaide, and he scored truly. And there was a very good individual effort there by Bruce Linder, just showing his desperation was a little bit greater, perhaps, than Eddie Fry's. So West Adelaide kicked a record score in that term for a grand final in South Australia with 10 goals, and they're up to 12-7 to 7-7. Interestingly, Robert, Craig Williams, and Richard Hamilton both on the interchange bench at the moment. Hamilton has played a very, very big game. Yes, but Craig Williams, he's had a bit of trouble with that hand. That's bad luck. But West Adelaide are showing at the moment just how confident they are in their ball skills. Bruce, their ability to move the ball from man to man accurately. Whereas Sturt, just perhaps not quite strong enough at getting it, and it's just giving them that little bit less time to get rid of it. Whereas West Adelaide going to the ball confidently and making sure that they get it in one grab, they've got a fraction of a second longer to get rid of it and therefore allowing themselves a little bit more accuracy in their attack forward. Do you expect John Halbert to make many changes? Jackie Love goes down back through the race. She's been probably as enjoyable part of the day as anything, Bruce. <laughs> oh, there's been some good football, hasn't there? Yes. Rick Davies will obviously start at full forward in this turn with the breeze, and Motley at centre half forward. They've just got to kick goals, don't they? They do, and I think they're taking a chance leaving Rick Davies up on the ball for too long. He's had chronic knee injuries and having had surgery last year. I know that he's um, having a lot of trouble with his knee, and so they'll need him in the full forward area because it is he more than anyone that can really turn again. Jim Derrington's back on the ground. He's in the centre square at the moment. That's good news for Sturt. He was carried off on a stretcher in that second term. He's just winding himself up and warming up in the centre square at the moment. So maybe Derrington can give them a lift in that all-important centre square. Here's the modern marvels of modern medicine. <laughs> One never knows what's happened to Jim Derrington, but he's certainly going again after a, a nasty knock when players fell on top of him. I think that's Santa. Is he re re related to Santa? No, I think it might be Cantor Laftus, <laughs> but uh, I think if West LA keep going, it's going to be a wild old night at the Richmond Oval. Oh, yes, they'll be looking forward to this. At, at 28 degrees heat, that's when they won their last premiership, and I see no reason why they shouldn't make it too on a very similar type of occasion. So five goals a difference at half-time. Ken Sturt turn it around. They've done it before. It's 12-7-7-7. Bill and De Jong. Big Frank had a big rest in that second term. Conlon's back on the ground. Howard running out of room. Fry wouldn't give the handball to Hutton. Then kicked it to a space, but it was only Bennett there. He's after every ball, this little fellow, Bruce. Short to McKinnon. Two big winners on the wings for West Adelaide today. Goes wide for Limner. Hake from the back. He looks like he might be playing on Muret. Zubernick to Howard, low, Graham from the back, Brown missed it, bad miss by Brown because Cantor left us, gave it to Watson, he's too loose, Darrell Brown on the take, guess who's got it again, Randall Bennett, he goes to Ian Borchardt, what a great combination these three have been through the centre of the ground, Borchardt quickly on to Watson, to Conlon who's returned, Conlon strong, high in the air, Sims in front with Reed. Luda's recovering, tapped out towards um, Winter, not Winter, I keep calling that centre half for Hood, Lindner, Winter, and Lindner kicks it out of bounds rather carelessly. Sturt, five behind, the worst thing that could happen would be for them not to get a couple of quick goals, and if West can get the first, it's going to be very difficult. Fry, Pake, Hutton, to Painter. 
wants Brown. Cantalaftis with him. Might have grabbed hold of him. Brown's got the pace. No free kick. Hollis is too slow though, Bruce. On the back up, he's just jogging on, bringing up the rear. Summit to Filky to Drear. Motley tries to run him down. Fry in the front spot. Pate comes over the back. Conlon missed it. So did Howard. But Howard's got it now. Wouldn't give the handball again. Back on it now to Fry. Left leg. Motley's going to have to go, I think. No, he and Drea never got near it. Winter took it easily. Whittlesey standing out of the play. They've left him up in the forward line. Howard in the centre. Maybe Whittlesey on the wing. Spoiled away from Zubernick. And now we get a free kick to Sturt. It'll be Grant Zubernick to take it. Just forward of the centre line. He attacks towards Davies. Davies from behind. He tackles, does it well too. Whittlesey this time, but the handle's not strong enough. Drea's there. Whittlesey, Motley, Sturt get a go. They're 8-7. West Adelaide are 12-7. There's four goals the difference. And 3-1 to Motley. Gee, they worked hard for that one, Robert. Looked in the end as if it wouldn't come off. But finally the ball got to Motley with Whittlesey getting his hands on it. Davies, the ball wasn't a very good kick actually by Zubin. It didn't give Davies a lot of chance. Whittlesey missed with the first handball and then was able to get it up to Motley. Motley quickly onto the boot and he's kicked his third and Sturt within four. So it's De Jong for West Adelaide. Spool for Sturt. Painter now. Goes straight towards Davies. He's in front. Burgess from behind. Brown fumbles the take. They both missed it. Candle after clears. McKinnon, no, it's Filky in front. And he's interfered with by Zubernick. That'll be Filky with a free kick on the half-back line of West Adelaide. He's got Bennett on his own. He's just jogged on for him. Randall Bennett. Just calming things down for a moment. Letting players get organised. They're all man on man. A lot of players in the centre area. Spiel in front. Linda from behind. Borchardt off hands. Over the top towards Smith. Smith tackled by Reed. Recovers quickly. Smith still in possession. Towards Conlon. Now Reed with a chance. Conlon's handball. Not good. So Reed hit fairly heavily then. He's going to get a free kick. Reed picks himself up. Mike Smith looks like he might have a cut around his eye. Gee, Robin McKinnon came in a bit loosely there on Peter Reed. Hope he's all right. Mike Smith, you can see, looks like a boxer, doesn't he? With that cut near his left eye. Fry with a screw punt and kicks it magnificently. Spiel tries to get into position. Bennett, he'll never forget this game. Ray Wilson won't either. Bruce, he's the opponent. Murat, Luders. Now Murat and Heinrich. Conlon or Heinrich, well done. Riddlesey. Murat. Rosser, it's a great kick, rarely misses, did this time. So Little Grosser has kicked 3-1. It's 12-8. That scoreboard hasn't changed up there, but it'll be 8-7 Sturt. So he's blotted his copybook. Eddie Fry to kick in. 12-8 to 8-7 the score. 4-1 the difference in favour of West Adelaide. The kick to the edge of the square. Spill tapping it on towards Howard. by Howard. McKinnon hitting it on though, he will not give up. Painter coming in strongly, he's hit high around the head, gives it over to Motley. And Painter's going to get a free kick. It's usually a good kick too. High tackle. So John Painter is on the half forward line. He need a good kick and he is a good kick time this one though, it's in the square, Davies in front off hands, Cantalaftis in front Brown running without it, Rosser gets it and away go West Adelaide one bounce, holds up the kick well done to McKinnon had his jaw broken twice this year McKinnon Heinrich we oh, had to wait for it Pake, can't really stretch out Pake, McKinnon Morrison Hutton Morris still Filky wants looters, too strong, and it's a behind. 12-9, 8-7. Filky's first score, John Halbert, has 
has coached Glenelg to two losing grand finals in the last two years. And now he's with Sturt and they're looking down the barrel. Eddie Fry. Into the centre square. Spiel in front. Spoiled forward by De Jong. Pike. It's a long hand ball towards Brown. He has looked to see who's coming. And then kicks it straight out of bounds. Fortunately for him, it lobs on the line. And it didn't go out on the full. So Daryl Brown very careless. Perhaps showing that there's no confidence to look ahead and place the ball. And Sturt need just that. Motley will do the rut work. De Jong's about uh, a foot taller. Motley did pretty well. De Jong playing a great game. So's Borchardt to Summerton. Long handball to Muret. Derrington tries to run him down. McKinnon, well done, Howard. Rosser. Howard's like a terrier at the moment. Trying to lift his team. And he means business. He's not happy with the umpire. As Rosser gets up and puts a right on Daryl Brown. Umpire says, naughty boy, don't do that. Rosser's still pointing the finger at Brown. And there's certainly no hard feelings much. A knock four by Borchardt to Zubrink. He's caught. that the umpire was on the blind side. 15 metres against Mike Smith. That eye patched up, but still bleeding badly. Zubernick wants Davies. Still Davies. Brown, oh, again he missed it. No free kick. Drea through Davies' legs. This time, Summerton gets the free. And then handballs to Bennett. To Filkey. Oh, Zubernick, that's very ordinary. And then had another go. some score on the ball into that forward line but they're certainly going to be more competitive by the looks of things but I don't think it's been competitive with the bodies it's going to help them Filky Spiel and the ball in so it's pretty hot here at Football Park 28 degrees and a little bit of heat out there at the moment so Sturt are not going to yield by the looks of things without a fight Spiel and De Jong De Jong towards Brown that's a better take gives it to Wilson he's got some pace he hasn't used it much today. Painted with beautiful ball handling. Goes to Michael Graham. He dummies. Oh, he's in great form. The kick goes forward. And he's done it again. Michael Graham. Five goals. Four in the second quarter. One in the third. Sturt, 9-7. West Adelaide, 12-9. What a performance by Painter there, though. He was never going to win that ball. He trapped it superbly to Graham. And what a footballer this man is. Sidestep once and let loose from 60 metres and it just kept on going. And John Painter, who's averaged 25 disposals this year, is in his fourth season, 23-year-old, and Sturt within 20 points. De Jong and Spiel. Dead heat, but De Jong gets it on the second to Pike. For Zubrinik. He's a bit slow, but he's found Graham again. The champ to Davies. But it's short. Rea's back there. They've got three players back near Davies. Derrington to Motley. Motley just carelessly to the boot. Sturt 9-8, West 12-9. First sign of panic from West Adelaide today when Drea couldn't take that ball. Peter Motley with that high drop to his foot and then Bruce with his kick. We've seen him on the run not good off and he's not bad on the set kick. Seemed to drop, lack control of the foot at times. Spiel de Young. Winter over the back. Wilson who's got a lift. Whittlesey just gave it away. Now Borchardt. It's a great kick. Hardly left the ground and hit Morris. Left foot. Pake is doing a good job back there. Smith over the back. Still Smith. Pake. Brown. Howard. He's getting back into defence to lend out from the centre of the ground. To half forward. Spiel hasn't held a mark today. He's going to get that pay. Three kicks around the neck, I think, Bruce. Wants Wilson. Motley's got his back to it. Wilson's got to take them all on. Bad handball by Spiel. Couldn't find the body. Bennett. He's done it so well all day. Summerton and Hollis. Still with Summerton. Missed the body. Candelaftis. Motley's just got to bear down on him. Still Candelaftis. Now Motley. Goes to the goal square. They want a good bounce, Sturt. Zubernick to Graham. He's kicked five. 
He's missed that one though. And it's 9-9 to 12-9. And West Adelaide are certainly panicking a little bit, but certainly got to keep this pressure up for a long time yet, Bruce. They're still three behind. A few West Adelaide players only get a bit of the fumbles. Sturt much more aggressive. Drea to McKinnon. Stood his ground, no free kick. What a quarter he's starting to play. Painter. Derrington's there, but he won't use him now. Davies wants it in the square. It's a good kick. Not paid, Drea. Again, West go without it. Free kick for Drea. And Darryl Brown's made some errors in that forward line. Bruce, he's a couple of good plays in the centre of the ground a moment ago. And when he gets up forward, he can't seem to do the right thing. So Drea high and wide. Whittlesea and Winter. Winter easily. Whittlesea's out of form. Took a long time. Murat is in the centre of the ground. West Adelaide catching up with the play. They're all well behind it now. Most of them in defence. Murat having a look. Trying to create an opportunity. He's going to go wide. Having to see it go to bounds, I would say. Ahead of Grosser and just that happening. So Craig Williams is getting ready to come back on for West Adelaide. Dislocated a finger. De Jong still there though with Spill. Spill with the left hand towards Brown. Oh, he's taking the field play. He's been excellent. Ray Wilson, can he take hold of this ball? He can. To the goal square. Davies from behind. He should get this one. No. It's out of bounds again as Candleff just comes around the back. So Rick Davies has got a fit of the fumbles. One of the greatest marks we've seen in South Australian football. He can't put a death grip on one today. De Jong comes off, Williams comes on, and who would have believed after 72 minutes of football that Davies hadn't kicked the goal? Burgess, Davies gets rid of him, then taps it to the square. Drea, steadies. Zubinic should get it. He's going to have to get it, Bruce, he's three on one. McKinnon to Watson, who fell over. Hollis tries to swoop on it. It'll be a ball up. One gets the feeling that the excitement's getting to West Adelaide, Bruce. A lot of the players are just really very excitable at the moment. They've just lost that nice, cool composure that they've had all season and in the first half of this game. Motley won the tap. Zubernik. Very good kick. Behind. He did pretty well to hook it back that far. So Leonard getting ready. Riddlesey's obviously injured. He's going to come off. And it's 9-10 to 12-9. Kick into the outer side. Bennett. Wilson. Off hands. Peter went into the centre of the ground. It's going to hit Spill on the head if he's not careful. He's not even looking. He smacks it back into the centre half forward area. Conlon's there with Brown. Brown slow motion. He's far too slow in that forward line. Leonard now with a chance. Morris knocks it out of his hand. Motley lifts his head. But then recovers beautifully. Kick's not so good though, and Candle after with a mark in the back pocket. So John Candle after for West Adelaide. Kicks to the centre wing, spills under it, he's there first. Williams from behind. Murad off hands, gets rid of it very quickly, but it's a throw. Now Frank Spill gives it to Hutton. Hutton kicks it towards Leonard. Wilson standing there unconscious, he just can't seem to get himself into the game at all, Bruce. Motoring along there, having a nice rest in the sun here at Football Park. 28 degrees in Adelaide. It's a, it's a good day for it, but it certainly is. <laughs> it's a fair bit happening right now. It's Spiel and Williams. Peter Winters play well. His twin brother Roger must be the unluckiest man in Adelaide today. Howard Muret did well though. To Bennett. What a star he's been. Smith, McKinnon. Oh, brilliantly done, Heinrich because they were in and Wilson took that beautifully. That's better by Ray Wilson, Bruce. That's more like his form. And he takes them on. Heinrich then takes on Borchard and kicks high and wants Leonard. Drea did well. Wilson, oh, he didn't do that so well. Motley got in his road. He had no chance, Bruce, but they're still in. They've got plenty of pressure up there on the ball. Painter to Graham, to Davies.
Keith Davies kicks a record. And it's Michael Graham that gave it to him. Some beautiful play by Ray Wilson. You can see the difference has made since the centre line. He got caught there at half forward. He had nowhere to give the ball. And he showed a bit of sense actually in giving him a little bit of space. And he tapped it out with that handball of Michael Graham's deft, controlled. And Davies with the easiest of goals. So Sturter still there. Rick Davies, average goals this season, six and a bit. And wouldn't Sturt love him to get six today? It's 10-10 to 12-9. Spielgotten Howard's road. It's going to be a ball up. I think I think Spielgotten his own road. What a grand final we might have here. It looked all over at half time. West had kicked the record score in that second term. But Sturt are trying to turn it around. Howard with a left footer. Dreer and Motley. Dreer's done well, though Motley's had a big first term. And then Dreer goes towards centre half forward. Morris. Beaten Hutton. Hutton's had a great final series, but he's found his match today. Luders. I think it's been weight of opportunities up forward. Bruce, I think any of the Sturt defence to get a kick would be doing well. Fry, Lindner, Muret's after it. Fry gets rid of it. It's going to be a ball up. Sturt mustn't let West in. Curley would love a goal now. There's Neil Curley. Hand to mouth still. So it'll be Trevor Sims and Craig Williams. Sims gets the tap, knocked forward by Conlon to Heinrich. His handball's bad. He's got Howard just across from him, but he's going to attack strongly to centre half forward. Motley led to the side, went to play on to the Greer. Up by Kinnear, very hesitant. I think he was prepared to call play on, but decided he hadn't done so. So Mark Greer. forward of centre in towards Conlon and Heinrich Heinrich fisted forward Ross is there Murat free kick to Murat he plays on to Conlon Conlon with the easiest of goals so they get another free kick West Adelaide umpire blowing the whistle at the right time and they make no mistake again well done they've gone to a commanding lead again 13-9 to 10-10 First goal for Bernie Conlon. Peter Murat wasn't as sure on the take that time. He might have been a bit lucky with Hutton giving away the free kick. He wasted no time like he did in that first quarter and gave it across to Conlon. Conlon made no mistake. So it's 87 to 70. The Spiel and Williams come in. Painter kicks it off the ground. And again, Derrington over the top towards Wilson. Graham and Wilson collide as Borchardt takes the ball. Morris sprinting towards it, gets an unfavourable bounce. Derrington getting back just in time to smother the kick, overrun by Smith. Morris to Conlon. So Bernie Conlon back on the ground. That goal might just get his pecker up again. So Bernie Conlon, 60 metres from goal. It's in the square. Sims is back there with Luders. Off hands. Eddie Fry takes a chance and a bounce. Goes long and wide, running Howard. He had Derrington much shorter. Howard's going to run it to the boundary line. Keeps it in. Leonard, Wilson, got a bad bounce. Winter, Derrington, remembering he went off on a stretcher earlier on. Leonard, there's going to be some tired players out here tonight. Wilson with his socks down already. Got plenty of time to recover, Bruce. Motley. Now Burgess charges off and goes short and he finds his captain. And then Borchard goes to McKinnon. McKinnon wants Morris. Hutton at the back. Now Pake. He's injured, of course. To Painter. Or oh, bad handball, misread. Morris scoops it up. In again, Morris. Left foot. That might be close. It's bouncing. Just missed. Jeffrey Morris is playing the game of his life, and it's 13 10 to 10 10. So West Adelaide just getting the ascendancy back slightly in this quarter. There are three goals in front. It'll be Eddie Fry to bring it in, and players giving their all. Sturt trying to hang in there. The kick's prodigious to centre wing. Off hands to Bennett. He can't finish it. Williams, he's caught. Heinrich coming in from the back pocket. On to Howard. I don't think he's got. 
got a gallop left in him, Bruce. Candle just goes to Bob, and he's caught for holding the ball. But Brendan Howard to send half forward. Motley and Drea. Spoiled by Drea. Grosser. Summerton. Off one leg. McKinnon, oh, I did it magnificently. Then punches it to the Conlon. To Murat. One bounce. Back screwy. Goal. Peter Murat, what a game you're playing. And it's 14 10 to 10 10. And Murat's kicked three. So Philip Heinrich got caught up the ground. Mike Smith, blood, blood running from his face. Heinrich caught up the ground then. Conlon on his own. Got it on to Murat. And Murat's back screwy was a superb one as he bananaed it back through the goals. Settled it onto the boot. Curved it in. So Bernie Conlon, just over two goals a match as a rover this season and 23 touches a game. Mike Smith goes down the race, battered and bleeding, but his side is four goals in front. Porchard short, Pake did it well. Great reflex. Then goes short to Graham. Oh, what a mark. That's fantastic, Bruce. He had players going more directions. He expected to get clobbered. And somehow or other, he just hung in there between them. Wants Hollis, and he's got him. Hollis, Hollis takes eye off the ball, Bruce. Still fumbling. Then gets a free kick. Richard Hamilton a little careless. He'd done everything right till the last second, and Paul Hollis, not too keen to put his hands on that ball too quickly. He lifted his head before he had possession. 60 metres. Sturt needing a goal. Sturt, 14 10 to West Adelaide. Three goals a difference, just three goals in it. That kick of Graham's was spot on. Hollis didn't do this very well at all. The free kick was there in the end, but he was a bit lucky. He had no confidence in taking the ball. He's only averaged the one goal this year, but he's kicked a lot throughout his career. So it's Frank Spiel in the centre. With Gra <laughs> Summerton's up from the half-back line. He kicks it wide to Lindner. Pakes back there. His handball's loose to Fry, but it's well done by Lindner as he tried to recover. Fry comes on with the play. Didn't take possession of the ball. We'll get a free kick. Robert Pakes actually playing pretty well across there. He's certainly given it a little bit of that half-back line. Bruce, there's no doubt about that. I think Ray Wilson's lifted a bit across the centre too. And under quite as much pressure as they were before with those easy kicks coming in. Filky. Ian Day. Mike Smith in the rooms having his eye stitched. Looks like he could be slightly concussed as well. Murat. Watson. He'll go to Grosser. Now Grosser loves kicking these on the run. Now he's going to go short. Morris. Touched. I thought touched off hand, Bruce, but no. Reed put his hand up and seemed to deflect. Jeffrey Morris with one goal three today. Had a lot of kicks, Morris. 16th kick coming up. Never misses these, Robert. Oh, I like him on the run. 20 metres out. Never's a long time. I think he's just poked it inside the left-hand goal post. 15-10 to West Adelaide, 11-10 to Sturt. So West has kicked 3-3 three, three in this term, Sturt 4-3, and Petey Muret is having an inspired game today. Watson has played well across half-back. I thought Gross would charge for the goal. He had another look and he saw that Morris was there. Reed tried to touch it, he couldn't. And Morris kicked the goal, and what a game he's having, averaging 2.3 goals this year. So Craig Williams and Frank Spiel in the centre of the ground. Williams knocks it forward. Howard can't stop it, but he intercepts, and there'll be another bounce down. It's been a good quarter of it. This is exciting now. They're playing as though it's a grand final. Both teams putting everything into it. Knocked forward by Spiel. Filkey gets it to Watson. Wild handball forward to Wilson. He's caught, but he gets it away long and strong to the half-forward line. Leonard coming across to Summerton. Summerton's handball is not as good as he'd like. Painter can't control it. He gets it back from Leonard. 
Leonard recovers into the game. So Sturt have held it there. And likewise for West Adelaide. David, let Sturt get into that full forward area. Spiel. Williams. Spiel in front. Paint, through Painter's legs. He's clean bold as Bennett knocks it on again to Filkey. De Jong getting ready to come on as Filkey goes to half forward. Hutton and Morris. And again, it's going to be a ball in. Big Dirk waiting to come back on. His football future at West Adelaide looked over six weeks ago. Much rosier now. Filkey waits for it and then threw it away. McKinnon, well done Brown, or oh, then he got rid of McKinnon. No free kick. Painter, left foot round his body. Derrington and Candelaftis. Splendid mark by Derrington. Motley's running for him. Davies waits. He's one out, Davies. Is he charged if he goes long? He has. Hollis is back there with Motley. Oh, great grab, Motley. It's going to be paid. Yes, sir, Reed. Mark for mine. You had the field glasses on it, Bruce. Stopped it dead in the middle of the pack. Peter Motley. And Kenny kicked the goal. He's kicked three today. 3-2, three, in fact. And for Sturt to really stay in business, they want this as Williams comes off for De Jong. And Motley's within 10 metres. Let's kick 1-1 one, one this quarter. Goal. He snuck it in. So 12 goals, 10 to 15, 10. Three goals a difference. That was a great mark by Jim Derrickman on the other side as Sturt came back into attack. Davies made a short lead, then dummied back, but he couldn't get there quickly enough, but the space he'd created was filled by Motley as he came back in quickly, mounted himself into the air, took the mark, and goal. 100 to 82, well into time on in the third term. Spiel and De Jong. Howard had a magnificent quarter. He's really blocked up the centre. He he's likes the close quarters, doesn't he, Bruce? Oh, his defensive play's been magnificent in this term. Goes wide to Motley. What a footballer. That's called judgment. And Davies is in the square. Can he boom one into him? Burgess has been just so good all day. Screw punt. He's got it running and really going. Burgess fists it away. And it's 12-11 to 15-10. Not a good kick for Rick Davies to mark that one. He went for distance, gave himself a bit of a chance with his torpedo punt kick, Peter Motley, and it was a magnificent kick, covering some 70 metres. It'll be Tony Burgess to bring the ball back in. High into the air. Tapped forward. Ian Borchardt. McKinnon. Very good runner, Robin McKinnon. A lot of pace. Very powerful man. Pake in front, gets a hand to that and fists it away, then recovers first. Tries to tap it on. Reed comes in after him. Reed dummying, but he's out of bounds. 11 to Sturt, 15 10 to West Adelaide. Spiel's a mile behind the pack, but he'll make it, I think. Murette's going to take it for West. The Spiel ran in so quickly, he ran straight into Murette, commonly called um, shepherding, Bruce. Grosser, Conlon, Luders. Didn't quite make it. Zubernick, that's an excellent handball and a great take by Hutton. Now Hollis is going to have to run. Watson. Still Hollis and Watson. They both go to ground. Filkey's there. Hollis taps it. Well played. Ball up. Hollis is held in the area for the Blues. Two on one. He tried to knock it back between his legs. He fade with it. But Watson was too good for him. Spill down short. Grosser gets it though. He's tackled and falls from his hands. Three quarter time. West Adelaide at 15, 10, 100, leading Sturt, 12, 11, 83, as Neil Curley leaves the grandstand. Met the same problem in Victoria against, against Hawthorne. They couldn't go on with it. Sturt, fortunately, though, have given themselves a chance. And, uh, gee, we've seen it before. Sides can drag themselves off the ground just with some imagination, some creativity, with some run, with some will to win, with a never-say-die effort. There's 30 minutes to go, and... Uh, the, the result's still in doubt. West Adelaide haven't won it yet. Certainly, Peter. West Adelaide have got some injury problems. Craig Williams had a dislocated finger. It's been strapped now, but he hasn't taken as much part of the game in the game as he normally would have. 
We've seen Mike Smith leave the ground in that third quarter. I saw the doctor putting stitches in the eye, and also he was slightly concussed. And we've also got the problem with um, Mike Smith. Mike's, no, I mentioned Mike Smith. Smith. There's one other player, there, or Richard Hamilton, Richard who's got Hamilton that bad knee, and yeah. he's been off the ground for some time, which has forced Curley to make some moves. Good news for Sturt that Darrington's back on the ground. He took a fine mark over there, whether he's completely confident or not. Well, it's hard to say, but everything's set for a magnificent last quarter. West Adelaide 15-10, Sturt 12-11, 17 points the difference. And boys, I'd like to be up there with you calling this last quarter because I reckon it'll be a great one. So Richard Hamilton's back on the ground. He's definitely in the centre that now. Ian's saying that he spent a lot of time on the bench, but he's certainly back in there. West Adelaide maintained that ascendancy across the centre in the first half, Bruce, but Ray Wilson lifted himself a little bit that quarter. He really put some hard work in on that outer side, and as a result, Sturt got some opportunities in the forward line, which they were able to capitalise on, and I think that's part of the reason for the lift, and Sturt have got to continue that drive from across the centre of the ground. Smith and Williams, the two players on the interchange bench for West Adelaide, as Rick Davies, with just the one goal to his name, goes down to full forward. And for Sturt, it's Whittlesey and Ford on the interchange bench. So Sturt trailing 83 to 100. You can see, Bruce, what a great team game it is. Michael Graham has been the one to pick up the goals for Sturt this afternoon. If Davies gets three or four this quarter, between them, they certainly would have done their job. So it's the start of the last quarter of the 1983 grand final. And it's Frank Spurl coming in against Dirk De Jong. De Jong knocking it forward. Conlon. West Adelaide straight into attack. Ludus. So the full forward is kicking away astray early. He's kicked three goals in the second quarter, none in the third. Now he's got an opportunity from about 40 metres at a 45 degree angle. Tucked away in the pocket. 104 goals this season. What an important kick. He's missed it. It's a behind a Ludus. They're all important, but 15-11 to 12-11. West could have got the jump, and who says that they won't? It's going to be very tough for Sturt to come back. A little bit inclined for Sturt to come up this grandstand side too, Bruce. They've got to attack, and there's very shield in front of the member stand. Offhand Zuber, and it gets it back from Spill. He's caught. No, he's not caught. He evades well. Candle after from the back pocket, coming down ahead of Brown. That is a very good mark. And he's on centre wing. Clears the half-forward lines, Pakes under it, Morris coming in from the side, off hands by Borchardt to the goal square. A very good mark by Luders again. It seems as though Neil Curley has put Bruce Linder back into the full forward area, Bruce. Yes, Linder has played at full forward for some of the season. He swapped around with Luders quite a bit during actual games. Luders missed a minute ago, but he's a lot Easier angle this time, just 30 metres out. 50,000 people watching him, and he's done it this time. He's kicked his four, and West Adelaide get the goal they wanted. It's 16 goals, 11 to 12-11. The Sturt have now got to suddenly find some extra effort. They certainly put a big effort in in the third quarter, and one gets the feeling that that may have drained them somewhat, but once again it was Ian Borchardt. He provided the link from the half-forward line. As he got the ball in, it was a wobbly old kick, dropping short. But Roger Luders, playing front position, was able to take benefit of the poor kick. Spill and De Jong together. They've been doing it most of the day. And De Jong's been winning it most of the day. Wilson got his hand on it. And he's going to get a free kick. As Hold, Hamilton, holding the man, Bruce. Hamilton was about to charge off. Four goals of difference. Wilson comes wide, looking for Howard. Oh, good Mark Winter. It's had a big game back there for West Adelaide today. Game's died down all of a sudden. None of the flurry of that third term. Take at the back. Won't be able to run very far with it. Not a good kick. silky has got it with a finger tipper. Now he's got Borchardt and Morris. He's going to go to Borchardt. So West still running. I think it'll bring it to life, of course. Bruce is Sturt making a bit of a comeback because West Adelaide's still holding their lead. Luders goes over again. Painter. Handball across to Heinrich. It's a great take at his toes. Into the centre to Spiel. Spiel back to Heinrich. Faints the handball. Then gets the kick away. Not very quickly. Michael Graham's got the pace in the front position. He goes to Zubranek. If it sits, they've got a chance to lose. And he short to Motley. 
So Peter Motley in the forward pocket. 45 metres from goal. 15th kick roll, but he's kicked four goals today. He usually kicks the ball fairly high. He likes the set kick. He likes to get the run in at the goal. He really puts his foot into it. It fades at the last moment. Couldn't hold its line. The kick perhaps lacking a little bit. Real punch. So through from behind. So stood at 12-12 and West Adelaide 16-11. Drea's going to go short to Burgess. Motley's got to do the chasing. Burgess runs around him. Great kick to Morris. Morris on centre wing. Hasn't let his coach down. Was fit enough to play. Curley picked him and Morris has produced the goods. Heinrich after Reed put it down his throat to Spiel. Painter. Very quick kick. Motley. Drea well done. Peter Winter. Bennett. It's been just so good all day to Drea. Motley still chasing. Drea to Morris. Morris or Borchardt, take your pick. It'll be Morris. Eddie Fry very loose up there on that line, Bruce. Jeff Morris to full forward. Luders with the run. Pate with the hands. Comes off hands. Wilson. West Adelaide at home, I feel. 70-11. Sturt 12-12. Yes, they've been able to kick two very quick goals in this last quarter. Luders and Lim are the two that have kicked the goals all year. Between them over 175. Morris, who's run all day, has really stretched that hamstring to its limit. And Linda, who read it beautifully, you can see that Luders has already got his arms in the air and is charging at home. And Linda made no mistake. So Linda's kicked 2 1. He's playing at full forward on Sims at the moment. And for Sturt to win, is going to take a superlative performance because it's 84 to 113. And West Adelaide almost five goals in front. And they can smell their first premiership in 21 years. Just notice Peter Murad standing there looking at the scoreboard at centre half forward. De Jong taps it down to Grosser. Beautifully done. Grosser just chips it in towards Fry and Borchardt. Fry from behind again. Linda's caught. Play on call. Pate gives it to Heinrich, to Sims, to the centre of the ground. Pater tapping it on. De Jong. Hamilton. Grosser. He's 50 metres from goal. He's strong. But he's crooked crook it off the line. <laughs> so West Adelaide, 17-12. Sturt, 12-12. So they're back to that lead they had at half time. So Sturt with all their effort in that third term, still five behind. Brown takes it short from Sims. Hutton provides a run. It's got him. He took a hard one from Filkey. Pretty tough Russell Hutton. Picks himself up. Very good sportsman, Hutton. Great cricket talent. High. De Jong at the back. Zubrinik to Brown. Brown's still running at least. Painter's got to make a yard. Always gets his kick away quickly. Through Winter's fingers. Burgess just shrugged off Davies. Then a left footer. De Jong went to ground. Spiel couldn't take it. Filky round his body. Heinrich with a finger tipper. He's just inside half back. He's had a great final series, but he hasn't been quite as good today. The kick's almost too strong for Zubernick. Great ball skill. Over the top to uh, Jeff Leonard. He took his eye off him, in fact. Leonard goes out wide. Motley from behind. So handball by Dreer. To Burgess. Little left footer. Filky. Grosser. Takes Brown on. Then bounces. Hamilton. To Muret. I was going to say Muret because he was the one that made the ground at centre half forward, but now Linda will get it. Well done, Larry Watson. We're still running. Hot day at Football Park, fresh legs, tails up, five in front. And Linda, who's kicked 74 goals this year and two today, can really hammer it home. 40 metres out. It's strong and it's straight. 12-12. So Rick Davies coming onto the ball now for Sturt as that goal goes through. West 
captivated tackling with a great deal of surety. And Linda reading it well. It's now that he'll probably produce a little bit of power. He's been fairly quiet most of the day, but it was Richard Hamilton again who got that ball forward. And his season disposal average of 20 gives some indi indication of just how good he has been for West Adelaide. Williams getting ready to come on. Davies in the ruck. Bennett. Summerton. Heinrich. He's taking it again. He's having a good final term. Wilson goes short. Loose kick. Bennett interferes with Wilson. So Ken Sturt pull off an impossible victory. There's six behind. Muret looks like he's hurt. Heinrich takes it from Wilson. They've got to go into attack with a lot more um, accuracy than they have been of late, Bruce. Hutton, that's a really strong kick. But Derrington's caught out of position as Candleaftis takes it. Gives it to Watson. Watson's got a lead upfield. Some interference against West Adelaide. Some interference behind the play to John Painter. So he's painted with the free kick. Try getting the ball back to him very slowly too. Spills in the goal square now. Davies on the ball. Short to Derrington. This play is always on, of course, the short play, particularly when West Adelaide are feeling that maybe with the big fellows in the goal square that Sturt will continue to attack long. So it's Jim Derrington, 50 metres out. It's a strong, straight kick. 13-12 to Sturt. 18-12 to West Adelaide. Five goals a difference. Double blue fans still feel there's some hope of giving West Adelaide, the champion team of this year, a big, big start. And with Rick Davies now on the ball, Neil Curley must be sensing this victory. Three premierships to Curley, 61 at West Adelaide, 64 South Adelaide and 73 at Glenelg. Jimmy Derrington's kicked the goal to put Sturt within five. So Rick Davies and Dirk De Jong. Davies with his left hand to Howard. He goes straight towards the half-forward area where Fry's been positioned. Off hands from Fry's. Drea spoils it away very well indeed. And Cantalaftis kicks it to Morris. Morris has read the ball perfectly coming out of defence. They found him with every lead he's made. He kicks it some 50 metres further forward. It's Reed over the back that spoils away from Muret. But Muret recovers first. Motley's at centre half back. Heinrich puts his backside in as Borchardt comes through. Borchardt tapping his head. I don't know what that means, Bruce. That must be some special signal they have on football fields. Used to do it at school, Robert. <laughs> Williams and Davies. Oh, Williams is strong. He just rode Derrington's bumper easily. Again, a ball up. So Fry's at centre half forward on Drea, and Motley's gone to centre half back. Maybe John Halbert's played his last card with Davies on the ball. Or oh, Derrington couldn't take it. Williams did. Lindner. Fight on behind play. It'll be all right, I think. Lindner's going to go up and just check up on it. <laughs> I don't think there's any need for him to check on anything. All he's got to do is kick it through the centre. He's been doing that well in this final term. He's kicked three today, two in this last quarter. 75 for the year from centre half forward. Now 76. The president has put them six in front. 19-12 to 13-12. So 31 shots for goal. Davies tapped that down to Derrington. It was great recovery by Craig Williams. And the kick was superb. So West Adelaide, through Bruce Linder on this occasion, putting themselves six goals in front with a, not quite half of the last quarter gone. Riddlesey's on for Derrington. Davies is in the ruck. It's 126 to 90. Been a long, long time between drinks for West Adelaide. Morris, Hutton, Howard tries to shrug off Hamilton. Tried to shrug him off with his elbow. Hamilton short. Borchardt almost. Left foot. Will it run? It will. Will Simsy get it? No, the leg break was too good for all of them, Robert. It was 19-13 to 13-12, and Borchardt's kick 1-1. One, one. The second quarter, we saw Peter Murat kick one through like that. That's the quarter in which West Adelaide really put the seal on the game with a great 10 goals three. 
So Trevor Sims to kick in after that bit of bad luck for West Adelaide. Spoiled away by Filkey. Motley can't get the ball to bounce. Williams coming through strongly. Davies coming in on the second run. Just back to Filkey. To the square. Pakes there. No mark paid to him. Rosser beautifully done to Morris on his natural foot. West Adelaide have top 20 goals there. 20 goals, 13. Sturt, 13, 12. Three goals to Morris. 21 kicks. Tim Pake arguing with Laurie Argent, telling him that he took the mark, but it wasn't paid, and Grosser was able to get it to Morris. Morris, who a week ago must have been despairing about the fact that he couldn't play in a grand final, and he went down to Lenny Smith Stables, who's a well-known racehorse trainer in South Australia, and put the magic machine on his hamstring and got himself ready, and Knuckles won't smile yet, but the King must know that West Adelaide are home. They're 2013 to 13, 12. He's got, he's got a smile coming out of both ears, though, Bruce. He smoked before, but it's a smile now. Craig Williams, he can sense it. He's lifted. Four chart bodies hutting out to leave Motley in possession. Zubrin exploring away on the centre wing from Grantley Filkey. So it's out of bounds on the far side. Sturt using up all that energy in the third quarter. They needed a 10-goal quarter to be in it. They couldn't bridge the gap. So Davies and Williams. Davies with his right hand to Zubernick. He's caught with the ball, just lays it off. For the pace coming through from Filkey. Run his full distance. The ball bounds in behind him. Short kick. Morris. Jeff Morris running up to Roger Luders, just telling him to behave himself. It's absolutely unnecessary for Roger Luders to have the ball taken away from Jeff Morris. Russell Hutton interfering slightly. Roger Luders getting upset is not going to help. Probably hinder if anything. Because after all, it's Jeff Morris with the ball. 55, 60 metres. It's a great kick too, but he's pulled it across his body and out of bounds on the fall. And it's one error he's made for the day and he hasn't made too many sims to bring it back in 90 to 133 maybe in his last game was dirt 250th today borchard gee he's strong he got rid of davies just gave him a little shove rick's not going to forget this for a while murad on the lead grosser it's going to be a ball up ian borchard today has had 22 kicks and eight handballs He's led his side magnificently. His first half was superb, Bruce. Bounce in the back pocket. Davies. Williams again following through. Be a free kick because it was kicked out of bounds on the full. Philip Heidrich to take that kick. The Sturt have got to get it past the centre somehow. Spill coming back into the ruck as Heinrich kicks it high in the air towards Motley. Can't complete the mark. Wilson to Davies to Wilson. Long handball towards Graham and Summerton. Summerton tapping it away to Borchardt. He goes straight at the goal front. Reed from behind. He's too slow to get it away, Reed. Pate backing up, gives it to Heinrich. Now Sturt with an opportunity, with a little bit of run. Michael Graham's on his own in the centre. Handball from Heinrich, very bad. Sort of a, a mistake you don't make. Unless you're very tired. Painter. Free kick. Interference. Instead of going from one back pocket, diagonally across the ground, to the opposite half-forward flank. And John Halbert must see it slipping away again. Seven goals behind. Hollis on a long lead. Burgess. Now Brown. Cantalathus over the top of him. Brown's got a free kick. He's going to play on quickly to Zubernick. Now Zubernick on the run. Drop punt. Whittlesey's got it. Well, ground well then, Bruce. Almost looked as though he pushed his opponent in the back, but he hadn't. What he did was he just held ground when his opponent came back into him. Just um, rode off him. So Craig Williams is off. Dirk De Jong on. Greg Whittlesey kicking for goal. That's a goal. So Sturt are now 14-12. West Adelaide at 2013. Greg Whittlesey's had just the five kicks today with three handballs. He's obviously had an injury. 
Brown's kick across the ground was very good to Zubernick. He actually missed kicked at Zubernick. You could see from that angle, from that camera, that got on the inside of the boot. And as Robert said, Whittlesey held ground superbly and took the mark. He's averaged 16 disposals this year. And this is a big moment as Jeff Morris comes off and 50,000 people give him a big, big cheer. And it's 2013 to 14, 12. Young and Spill. Spill to Leonard. He misses Graham by a mile. Wilson. Short to Davies. And that's what Sturt have done all the season, that sort of movement. But not today. The West Adelaide centre line have held strong and firm. So Rick Davies with an opportunity to put Sturt within five goals. Wind across from left to right. It's a very powerful kick by the Sturt captain. And straight through the centre. They're now 15 goals, 12, 102. West Adelaide, 20 goals, 13, 133. And so Davies goes past Pratt and Hudson with 151 goals. And Sturt get their second within a minute. Bennett made probably the only mistake he's made all day. And Wilson's left foot pass was a beauty to Davies. And we've been seeing it all year, but not today. Ian Day. Jeffrey Morris has got his leg in ice. When I asked Barry Downs if he'd done his muscle again, he said, oh, only a little bit. He's done a lot more than that, of course, today, <laughs> as Borchuk kicks it with his left leg. Zubernick marks it. Brown Zubernick on centre wing. Motley leading wide. The kick going far too wide and out of bounds. So Sturt a little indirect. Spill ran on. Zubernick could have put a longer kick. I think it would have been better advantage, but it's easier for us than it is for the tired players. So Jeff Morris... Exhausted as he's got his leg in ice. Spill knocking it down. Borchardt gets there again, gives it away to Grosser. Spill runs him down. In fact, almost pushed him in the back, it seemed to me, but the umpire's not interested. And the ball's out of bounds on the half forward line for West Adelaide. The kick 5 3 in this term, West Adelaide. Still Neil Curley looks somber to 3 1. Spill over the back. Grosser, no left leg. But he did it well with his right. McKinnon, was he off? Going to go short. Luders, Pake at the back. Now Howard. He's played a good game today, Brendan Howard. To Heinrich, who's continued to run in this final term. To Hutton. Sturt not giving it away. Brown should take it. Cantalaft has gotten his road. Now Brown. He can charge towards Hollis. Wants Davies. Davies gets it a bird, just fly, it won't sit. Drea gets back, Davies tries to barge his way through. There's going to be a ball in. Gia Sturt could get one here, and then another one in a hurry. <laughs> 20 minutes at least, Bruce, you're quite right. It'd be exciting to the Sturt. They're going to make the game exciting. But I think West Adelaide have got too much there at the moment. De Jong and Davies against body, Brown's left foot snap smothered by Conlon superbly Graham waits for it Watson, Conlon Whittlesey can hardly move in that pocket Bruce, he's gone for all money, he's definitely got an injury, Conlon's pick up excellent, Williams is big and strong Bennett's running for him, Sims stops the movement, Trevor Sims took a charge he should have spoiled that Bruce, two players in front of him to bring it to ground Went for the mark, and of course Williams with a great pair of hands. Borchardt not interested in making any extra efforts there. He's happy to see it go out of bounds. West Adelaide now with a chance to block it up on the half-forward line. Players very tired. They've given everything. They won't enjoy their celebrations tonight. They'll be too tired, I'm sure. Painter just taps it to Spiel, to Motley, to Leonard. To Painter's found an effort. A long kick to half forward towards Fry and Dreer. Dreer, who's been a magnificent player. Fry just dives on top of the ball. For what reason, only he knows. Summit and rebounds for West Adelaide. Hutton's there for Sturt. Howard, smothered by Conlon. Howard, Leonard, to Hollis. Winter with his nose on the ball. It's a bad bounce. Picked up by Whittlesey as he gives it to Spiel. He taps it on, but not to, only to Bennett. Spiel again. Painter, blocked by Candelaftis. Candelaftis to Filky, to Plaza. They can go all the way. One bounce, drop punt. Missed it. Threes, Mr. Daly on Grosser. I don't believe it. It's 
2014 to 15 12. And those players that were in that exchange must be just all so tired. Pate to Sims. And old Simsy takes the mark. 31 years of age, 250 games. Maybe this is his last. Maybe no more seasons for Trevor Sims. Daryl Brown, he's got Motley, but he fell over. Or Painter, he can take his pick. He's going to take a chance to Motley. And McKinnon back there. That's the first time Peter Motley's been outmarked like that for a long for ages, I think. So Robin McKinnon, a great first-year player for West Adelaide, to the centre of the ground. Grassley Filkey, he fumbles, evades Michael Graham. To half forward, off hands from Hamilton. Sims knocking it towards Motley again. Round his body towards Zubernick, and he's found him. Zubernick plays on to Hollis, then runs on for the handball. Good tackle by Filkey. Well done. So West Adelaide leave Grant Zubernick lying on the ground and Dirk de Jong goes into attack. Sims didn't read it too well. Grosser, Muret. 134 to 102. Getting close to time on. Luda's short. Bad kick. It's a tired leg. Bruce isn't tired in there. Well, there might be. Hot day. Daryl Brown. Straight down the ground, makes some ground quickly to Davies. Well done by Burgess, is with him. Backing up is Candleaftis. He gives it to Watson. Burgess into time on. He's at centre wing. Davies is after him. Just to give you some idea of the pace of the big fellow. He's caught him too. Well done with Davies. The skipper's not going to get up. Painted to Davies. And he gets the ball. A great effort. Leonard. Fries in the square. Hollis letting the ball go, Bruce. High towards Fry. Fry not strong enough in the close in body contest. Can't hold his ground. Bennett's back there for West Adelaide. And they clear through De Jong. Goes wide. Muret chases with Brown. It's going to be a ball in. 134 to 102 into time on been since 1961 at the Adelaide Oval when West beat Norwood by six goals since they won a flag. Bennett, they've only won seven and they won four of them up to 1908. Now Howard, the Cray Fisherman, to Brown. Bennett tried to make the effort, he just couldn't. To Heinrich. Sturt still trying. Wilson. Candle after saw a bad kick on it. He took 20 minutes to do it. It's seen that long, Bruce. But then kicked a half-hearted little chip kick across to the centre. And the West Adelaide back pocket player took it with ease. To Drea. And he's got the whole of football park in front of him. One bounce. Luders wants it long. Linda will get it. He'll just tuck it under his arm. And he'll probably go back and kick a goal. 13 kicks for Linda. Jeffrey Morris looks on. He knows that there's a celebration and a cup just two or three minutes away. Very pensive indeed. Absolutely exhausted, I would say. So Linda, the man for the big occasion. Kick four. Kicked it strongly, but it's a behind. So for Linda today, it's four goals, two, and it's 20 goals, 15 to 15, 12. Tim Pate to bring the ball in. Short to Leonard. Leonard's in the back pocket. He's so far clear, he can drive a motor car around there without running into anything. Off hands from Spiel. No, he's paid the mark. Big Frank Spiel. 33 points the difference. Leonard to half forward. Hollis in front. Watson behind. No free kicks as the umpire is summit and recovers to Watson. He gets it towards McKinnon. McKinnon to Hamilton. Hamilton strong to half forward. It's high. It's Linda in front. He flies. Spoiled away by Hutton. Conlon. Murat to Conlon. That's beautiful control. That's lovely movement by Bernie Conlon. Runs it just lowly to the goals. It's just across the face and through for behind to Bernie Conlon. And I wonder what John Halbert's thinking about. Third time to football park. 
on the first Saturday in October. Same result each time for three consecutive years. They've tried hard, Sturt. They haven't let him down. They've given everything. Leonard just couldn't make it work up forward when it counted early. Heinrich with one bounce. In again as Wilson Shepherd's three. He'll go to Hollis. No, he won't. He's going to go all the way himself. Riddle sees underneath it. And he's juggled a mark. He's got great ball skill, Greg Whittlesey. A lovely mark. Unfortunately for Sturt that he's been injured this afternoon. He's obviously a bit proppy on one leg. They've had to put him in that forward pocket where he's done a pretty good job. One goal to Whittlesey. State representative. It's gold. That's two. Just snuck it in. So Sturt won't lie down, but it's much too late, of course. It's 16-12. 2016, 136, and Neil Curley's come down from high in the sky to be on the boundary line. Here's Heinrich with a good effort then as he ran that ball up the ground. Obviously he's going to do it on his own. Then finally he had to kick it, and his kick wasn't a good one. Watson blocked him off at the last second. He kicked it across the front of the goal mouth. And Greg Whittlesey took a well-judged mark. Well, Alan Jeans had to put up with it a week ago, and now Neil Curley... Photographers everywhere as they look at curls. Spill with a tap. Leonard tries to tap it on. Spill tried to get a big handball away, but Williams robbed him of it. Linda, Graham, one young champion and an old one. Graham beautifully to Howard. Howard to Fry on a long lead, but Fry couldn't quite make it. There's going to be a ball in. So Sturt attacking wide to the corner rather than going to the goal square, getting out in the corners of the ground. So Frank Spill coming up with Craig Williams to compete for the throw-in. Siren is imminent. Grosser to McKinnon. He's a lovely mover, Robin McKinnon. Brushes Zubernick aside and kicks to centre half forward. Reed from behind with Murat. They've been in front up forward all day. Murat, good skills. Linda to the square, he's really piled driven that one. Pop that to Harold. We don't reckon we can win it. Try that for size. 21 goals, 16 to 16 goals, 12, and West Adelaide have won it. What a moment for Neil Curley. Sacked in 1962 after taking them top in 61, and West 21-16. To 16-12, he went to South Adelaide in 64 and took them from bottom to top, then to Glenelg, and now the West Adelaide boys have won him his fourth grand final. He must be so very, very proud of them. Top all year, 18 wins in the minor round, minor premiers for the first time in many, many years, and home today. So Craig Williams in his All-Australian year, Robert. And it really has been a wonderful season for West Adelaide. Certainly has. And Barry Downs, the manager, I see Peter Murat going across to speak with him on the boundary line. Barry Downs, of course, has been a very amiable person, a lovely fellow. But Neil Curley, to all the players, there's no doubt about it. West Adelaide have played very, very well. Sturt today put up a very gallant effort for the second quarter, second to none, in which West Adelaide scored 10 goals three. A grand final record saw them steer themselves to a well-deserved victory after a very, very good season in which they were on the top of the ladder for most of the year, except for some short time when Sturt were there. And then Sturt fell into a bit of a hole just prior to the final round. And then West Adelaide, they didn't fall into any hole. They maintained their very good form. There was only one letdown at the last minor round game against West Torrens, in which they certainly didn't play well. But in the two final round matches, they have been a very, very good close-knit unit. So it's an emotional moment for the man and his players, the man who they called the king of South Australian football in the 60s, who many thought was the greatest captain coach we've seen whose coaching career was at the crossroads when he went back to Richmond in 1981, but who has succeeded and has brought McKinnon and Drea and Conlon into the side from 1982. He's had so much success all year. And little Bernie Conlon, who came from the Swans, was runner-up in the McGarry medal. 
Mr. Let's Rackham join Premier, Max Bash here, the president of the South Australian National Football Firstly, League. Firstly, may I thank the football public of South Australia for the wonderful support they've given to the league throughout the year. And in particular, for the wonderful way in which they've honoured our request to, to keep the ground free for the players to participate in the Premiership trophy. I think you'll all agree that uh, it's been a great game today, but West Adelaide have been the top side throughout the year, and it's only fitting that they should be the Premiers. However, I think congratulations are due to the Sturt Football Club on the wonderful fight that they've made in getting to the finals and participating here today. It's been a great game and played in the finest traditions of our great Australian game. And I want to congratulate the players on both sides for that particular situation. It, it is my very great pleasure to announce that the winner of the Jack Odie medal for the best man on the ground today was West Adelaide captain Ian Borchard. I would now like... I would now like Ian Borchard to come forward and be presented with the Thomas Seymour Hill Cup for the Premiership of 1983. Ian Borchard, will you come forward, please? tribute to the West Adelaide coach Neil Curley, their committee and all of the players associated with the club. Well done Neil. And now I would like to ask Ian Borchard to respond. Thank you Ian. Thanks Max. Because we worked hard for this I tell you. None of the believe how hard all our players have worked this year. We had quite a few boys that couldn't quite make it. They helped us get us there. We promised them we'd get it for them, and we've certainly done that. Bad luck to Sturt. They were, they were the team that you know, we had to beat. A lot of luck goes with those things, and I think we worked a little bit harder, perhaps, and the luck went our way. Thanks very much. tremendous tribute to Sturt. They fought it out to the very, very last second. And even though we may have looked a fresh aside, they really gave their all today and congratulations to them. <laughs> the West Adelaide players, I can only say how proud I am of them. They've been a great side all year to coach. They're a great mob of lads and uh, gee, we've really had a fantastic day. Thank you all. Thank you. And so the team that Neil Curley has publicly said is the best that he has ever coached has not let him down. They've won the 1983 Premiership. There's going to be celebrations tonight, Robert, at the Richmond Oval. It was 21-16 to 16-12 in the end. 142 to 108 as Ian Borchard is about to lead them on this the traditional lap of honour for the victor at Football Park. As they go past the Sturt team, John Halbert standing there team responding to the West Adelaide victory. So let's perhaps have a look at a few goal scorers while they're going around. Bruce, 
for Sturt, Brendan Howard kicked one, Jim Derrington one and Paul Hollis one. Michael Graham, of course, kicked five. Davies and Whittlesey each kicked two, and Peter Motley kicked four goals. And what about for West Adelaide, Bruce? Peter Muret finished with three, Robert, with the single goal scores were Mike Smith and Bernie Conlon and Ian Borchardt. Jeff Morris kicked two, three to Grosser, four to Luders, and Bruce Linder, who kicked that long goal at the end and finished with five for the match, four in the final term. So they're the details. 21-16 to 16-12, and of course in just a moment, Ian Day and Peter Marker will be joining the West Adelaide side in the club rooms. Neil Curley, I wonder if he's going to make it all the way around. He'll romp it in, Bruce. I reckon he can walk across the lake tonight. To win a premiership must be the thing that everybody aims for. It's the highest honour in South Australian football. Curley is really lapping it all up as he goes around with Borchardt. What a leader and a very good choice for the Jack Odie medal, Robert. Ian Borchardt's first half was absolutely magnificent. It was a superb performance and it's only fitting that Ian Borchardt should be the person to take that medal and well done to he and West Adelaide. We'll be back with the excitement of the club room situation in just a moment with Ian Day and Peter Marker.
injured, had such an excellent year, and yet he missed out on the second semi-final and also on this grand final. But Neil Curley had the faith in the 20 players who defeated Nord in that second semi-final. He thought they could do the job for them today, and they do the job they did. They trailed by a goal at quarter time. They were five in front of half time, still three in front of three quarter time, and they won in the end by five goals for 21, 16 to 16, 12. Well, the good thing about it, Bruce, of course, is that as far as West Adelaide are concerned, it's the youth of their players. And there's nothing better for a team who have just got players in the age from 22 to 28 years can then gradually uh, build their team together over the next few years. There's no way that they shouldn't go on to bigger and better things, Bruce. It's been a wonderful day for them. And as these players develop an experience, and of course this experience here today, being a winning one, must stand them in very good stead. It happened to Port Adelaide when they had their run of three just recently, and I'm sure that West Adelaide in a very similar position. We'll take a break, and we'll be back in just a moment, and going down to the rooms with Ian Day and Peter Mark. Attendance today 47,129. Let's go down into the West Adelaide Club rooms and Ian Day. Bob Lee, former West Adelaide player, now president. It's a great day for the club. Yeah, it's it's a day we've waited a long time for, Ian, but it, but it is. It's a really great day for us. Bob, you know, there was a few hairy moments out there. For a moment, did you ever believe that you weren't going to win it? I was fairly confident most of the way, but Sturt played very, very well indeed, and uh, they're, they're a very good side. and. Uh, uh, I think to win it in those circumstances makes it even more worthwhile. They certainly fought on the last moment. Do you feel as though obviously the break was a big uh, fact in West Adelaide's win, the fact they didn't have to play last week? Well, it has to help, of course, but it was something that we earned. It wasn't given to us. Uh, it, it was earned and uh, it has to help, of course. But uh, I think probably the, the biggest factor in our favour this year has been the complete team performance. We haven't been uh, dependent upon individuals or any particular individual. It's been a complete team performance all the way. But well, I think that was evident again today. Sure was. But what are the boys being spoken to behind the room there? It's unusual uh, for a coach. The training tomorrow morning. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't think he'd be training him tomorrow morning, but I, I, I think he'd be uh, paying his compliments to him. Some, some very sure heads. He, uh, Ian Borchard won the Jack Odie Medi for the medal for best on the ground. He's had a great season. Oh, yes, and, and he's a very, very fine leader. What are West Adelaide's going to do? Apparently, they, uh, from what we heard earlier, Doug Thomas saying that you've got a couple of players lined up for next season already. You certainly haven't let grass grow under your feet. Well, we're... The first thing that we had to do was to win this premiership. Uh, and, and that one, and, and we'll enjoy 
enjoy and we'll celebrate that. But we're hoping that this is more than just one premiership. We're hoping that it's the beginning of a successful era. Peter Muret, congratulations. Another wonderful performance. Thanks, Ian. Surely you're not going to retire now, mate. Yes, I am. <laughs> Sorry, it was only your toe. Yeah. Yes, I am, Ian. That's, that's the final. Even after a great effort like that, my friend. That's only one game. There's 22 games in a minor round and you've got the finals. Uh, that, that is the last one. Peter, when you went on, what was in your mind there? You, you came on as an interchange player. Were you, were you excited? Did you realise you had a just how did you feel? Well, that was 110, maybe 120 minutes ago. So long. a lot of things go through your mind during the stage. But um, I knew, like, I suppose everyone knew they had a job to do. And uh, all it was was hard work. And that was, that's what he told us before the game. And uh, that's what we done. Neil just had you in the room behind the closed door there. What did he do? Thank you for the year? Yes, yes. We, he thanked us for the year. And uh, uh, we responded and thanked him for the year. And he uh, just warned us about two little things, uh, three two or three little things that happened when a side wins the Premiership and told us to be careful. Peter Murek, congratulations, well played once again. Can I just say... Uh, yeah, sure. To my mum and dad, my brother and all that, back in Broken Hill. For your mum and dad, don't you let him retire uh, either. Let's go and get some players. <laughs> Doug, Doug Thomas... <laughs> The players who can't find them. They've just come out now. They've just been in the office with Neil, and he's just given a little congratulations. He'll get on to him now, Daisy. He's done a great. How excited! It's over 20 years. A magnificent performance. 22 years. Holding up the flag. Doug, who did you think played well? Did everyone play well? I think Tony. Everyone played well. I thought Tony Burgess' job in a disciplined effort in looking after Rick Davies was absolutely magnificent. Peter Murat was out of this world, wasn't he? He was his architectural work in the forward lines. Bruce Lindner kicked five. Roger Luders. Everyone contributed the whole day. Ricky Hamilton went back on the second half with one leg, and we still got up there. <laughs> what about Jeffrey Morris performing? Jeffrey Morris even with right that? through to the last in, in the 90 minutes, pulled his hamstring again. What a great effort for the players. Excellent. Crazy. Yeah. Well, come on, who's this round here? They are. Get the gloss. Yeah. Mike, yeah. what have you had done to yourself there, mate? Oh, yeah. copped a, uh, a little one. Nothing to worry about. Were you concussed at all? Or was it... Oh, I think a little bit, but, but this takes it off. That's not a victory. Mike, you've come from Victoria. Is this your first grand final? Yeah, at this level it is, and yeah. And how did you see the game? Was it pretty hot out there? Yeah, very warm, like comparison to the other uh, guys that we played, but you know, it's magnificent to be involved in this sort of thing, isn't it? Hell, they're making plenty of noise. Craig Williams, give us a look at that finger, mate. Oh, that's all right. When you came off the ground, it was at left angles. I felt sorry for you. Yeah, I, at least I could itch the other one with it. Your first time that you've played in a grand final? Yes, sir, yeah. yeah. And it's the first, obviously, the first win. What's going on tonight? Oh, a lot of fun, I think. A lot of fun. The president. Well done, Craig. How are you? Jesus, mate, you started a bit slow, but came on like a, a bomb. Oh, uh, well, I think the, the, the weather told after a while, the Stuart's um, day off. I mean, less a day off than what we have, and we had time to recover, and the legs showed out after after four quarters of football. Tell me, did. did Linda, have any grand final nerves? Did it worry about going out there for the big one? Oh, oh that's true. I think it worried everyone going out for the big one. This is what the combination of the year's work and uh, the way the celebrations are going now and for the next week makes it all worthwhile. <laughs> well done, Brucey Linda. All the best for next year and a great first up to boo on television. Thanks, for thanks. Gary Middlemight, Grantley Filky. What have you been doing? What's that? <laughs> Tiring? Really hot, yeah, it certainly was. You, you started on the bench. What did Neil tell you when you first went out there? Anything in particular? No, he just put me arriving for a while. And then half time, you had to think about it, and he put me, put me on the wing for the second half. But, oh, jeez, it was hot out there. Did you ever have a moment's doubt that they're going to win? That you were going to win? Ah, uh, yeah, right up to about the 20 minute mark of the last quarter. It always looks like they're going to come back. They fought on really well, oh, didn't unbelievable. they? Unbelievable. I didn't, th I didn't think we were going to get up there for a while. Exactly. Another river boy. Congratulations, mate, and well played. Thanks very much, Ian. Jeffrey Morris. Can I get it? Can I, oh, can I get your... <laughs> they can take a photograph. We'll keep, keep on going. We don't mind. We're, yeah, take a photograph. <laughs> Jeffrey, they... Take his photograph. We'll keep talking to you. You're going to put it up there. Are you spilling it? <laughs> Congratulations again, mate. What a magnificent...